What is up, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of Calm Before the Storm, a relatively new Heroes of a Storm podcast with uh, my boys, Nupcakes and Pally Time. This time is a special guest on the show. Quite pumped hey. and excited to welcome you back. How's it going, guys? Good. It's going real good. I stayed up all night playing video games. Oh, the dream. Living the dream. <laughs> I was say the dream, but you have slept enough to uh, participate in some some top notch, super cool discussion today. I mean, you hope so, right? <laughs> I hope so for sure. <laughs> our, our lawyers will be in contact if not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because there there's quite a lot to talk about actually this week um, yeah. in terms of Heroes of a Storm, right? Uh, a lot of new content was released. Mm. Uh, or still has to be released next week. Uh, new Battleground uh, Alterac Pass is going to be upon us. Uh, and we already received Irel, uh, the Paladin, the Draenei Paladin, uh, this upcoming, or this week, actually. So what are your yep. what are your impressions? Like, what are your expectations and hopes of like about all the new content that is going to be, uh, you know, unleashed upon us? Hmm. Will I go first, or do you want to go yeah, first, Pally? By all means. All right, I'll go first. Um... Well, I'm like I'm I'm super excited for all this stuff. I mean, we're gonna probably dive pretty in depth into talking about some of the different aspects of it. But yeah, these uh these last couple of weeks and the couple of weeks coming up are it's a good time to be playing heroes. We've got Irel, we've got the new uh, map with the event, which is awesome. Can I just say I predicted this on the show two weeks ago, <laughs> didn't I? Say Nexomania, choose a side. Wouldn't it be cool if they did something with that again? And hey, I, I logged on to EU. Was it yesterday? And hey, Horde versus Alliance. Choose your side. Predicted who did you, it. Who did you pick? Uh, uh, I picked the best side. Oh God, I know where this is going to. <laughs> Kendrick, Kendrick will agree with me on what the best side is. Really, Kendrick? Kendrick <laughs> tell him what it is. No, uh, I didn't know you were an Alliance player, Nupcakes. I am. Yeah, man. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I've dabbled. I've been both sides, but I'm currently Alliance. Yep. No, you I'm are. There's no going back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say that I'm be I'm going to be playing a Void Elf next expansion. Shame nice. on me. Shame. I'm currently leveling one as well. Yeah, no. that that heritage armor is pretty pretty cool. So, <laughs> well, I actually yeah. thought I was going to be the one who's outnumbered, right? <laughs> so this is yeah. Ooh. I was expecting that too. That's a surprise. Oh, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Apparently, I've let both of you down somehow. <laughs> despite being on opposite sides. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> we're just Pally, what, what were your uh, what were your expectations, or what, what are your first thoughts when you saw that screen pop up? You know, choose your side: Stormpike or Frostwolf. So I, I, I did go with the Horde, right. as any upstanding person should. Right? Mistakes, <laughs> errors are human. But, 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 to your credit, but, uh, Alliance mm -hmm. has the better mount in the pack. It, it's pretty good, all right. I, yeah. think, I think the Ram is better than the Wolf. Yeah, there's uh, already a couple of Wolves in the game, right? There's not yeah. that many Rams. Isn't there actually like a, like a White Wolf with a Horde symbol already on it? There is. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I think that would be a better, like, I know it's already in the game, but, like, that symbolizes <laughs> Horde more to me than just mm -hmm. a generic wolf. But, you know, that's just me. Uh, right, but I'm works. excited about it. It is kind of weird. So I pride myself on having every uh, vanity item in the game, like every skin, every ah. spray. I have it all. <laughs> oh, these not last anymore, two, though. Exactly. These last two events <laughs> have kind of... Made me oh, choose man. a side, and I don't know how I feel about that actually. But I, I think I'm the minority in that regard for sure. To go to go back a little bit, a few weeks. Uh, are you guys Team Lunara or Team Sonya? Uh, ah. La Parca Lunara. All me right. too, because she had the better artwork. I thought. Same, same. Oh my goodness, yeah. we are through Lu three Lunara players here now. <laughs> Amazing. I actually well, haven't heard of anyone that picked Team Sonya. <laughs> Poor Sonya. Oh. Seriously. My my gut was to go for Team Sonya because I like the okay. character more. I enjoy playing mm. the character more, but the artwork for Lunar yeah. was just too good. It was too good. Yeah. It was really good. And I think she also probably <laughs> had the best entrance ever in that Carbot video. <laughs> did you guys see that with Karazim? <laughs> I no, I haven't seen that one. Oh, it's so good. Oh. You got to watch it. I don't want to spoil it because right. it's really uh, funny. You got to check that out. <laughs> I'll be watching after the podcast. That will be my evening. I'll check it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, for those of you who are watching this for the first time, um, this is Calm Before the Storm, a podcast about Heroes of the Storm. We're going to try to give you guys interesting 
uh, content, interesting topics to talk about um, in every episode. Uh, we already have uh, have had pretty awesome guests here. Pally Time, Heku, two weeks ago, uh, who's doing a fantastic job, by the way, at the midseason brawl. Really enjoying her segments. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, especially the first timer, I think. I don't think she's ever done it before live on camera for Blizzard. So, uh, mm. tip my fedora. And uh, yeah, so for today's episode, we have a lot of interesting stuff to talk about, right? We're going to start things off with Alterac Pass. We're going to talk about that battleground a little more in depth. I'm pretty sure both of you probably have had the chance to play it on the PTR. Uh, excuse me, PTR uh, already. Right? <laughs> there we go. Okay. I, I didn't understand what you were saying at the start. I was like, what's this PTR? Is it a pirate thing? What's that? <laughs> PTR, I got you. I got you. And uh, then we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna continue with a little bit of midseason brawl talk. You know, the group's phase uh, is now done. All the matches have been played, and now this upcoming Saturday, I believe, we're going to move on to the playoffs phase. Uh, NA doing very well, which is probably gonna make Pally and uh, yeah. other fellow North Americans very very happy. Uh, then we're gonna talk a little bit about Irel. Uh, there's quite some controversy about her release in terms of how strong is she, how weak is she. Uh, is the design good? Or is it bad? Do you guys enjoy it? Do you not enjoy it? We're going to talk a little bit about those things. And uh, last but not least, as one of the like fixed things we always have in com before the storm, the hero chop shop, um, there's always like one fictional hero concept that we thought of uh, that could maybe you know one day find its way into the game. Who knows? And uh, we're going to keep the hero secret for now. We're going to keep it as a surprise, as always. <laughs> last uh, week, I always said last week, um, two weeks ago, we had Malganis uh, created Ooh. by the boy Nupkex. Yep. And uh, it was quite cool. I think people <laughs> liked it, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good fun. So this time, Kendrick has, has been the designer. Yeah. So we'll I think see at some point, if we up. get to see... I'm not sure if you're into that kind of stuff, Pally. Do you like, uh, you know, theory crafting and tinkering around potential hero concepts or is that not really your cup of tea absolutely uh, a year and a half ago i made um carbot reached out to me calling him out here just a little bit but i, I call him out every time i see him so it's not a surprise uh he was like hey would you like to make an it be cool if episode you write the script you oh, voice wow. it and then i'll animate it this was a year and a half ago and i did it and there's still no episode, but I wow. have Deathwing all planned out. Deathwing's done. Deathwing's ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever need that, uh, awesome. I, I, de I definitely enjoy that kind of stuff. Awesome. <laughs> so who knows, man? Maybe if we if we get the honor to have you on the show again, you can do the concept, and uh, yeah. we're gonna talk about it. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I that should be like that. that should be the second time you're on the show, kind of thing. Like first time, you don't have the pressure of doing the hero chop shop, but then second time. Second time you're under pressure, you got. There's do not it. even any pressure. It's already written. It's easy. <laughs> like I have the script right here somewhere. <laughs> you're gonna bait the community and tease them so hard if you already promised this Deathwing, mm -hmm. and then you're not gonna deliver. You know, another fake news. <laughs> right, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm good. I'm good for it. We should do the Deathwing special right before BlizzCon. Every year. Every year we need to do oh, it. Oh boy. <laughs> that, that's kind of my joke every time I see Carbot because I do run into him at events fairly often. I'm just like, so how's that um, how's that Deathwing episode coming? Is that gonna be released soon? Still working on it? What's his response? He's, what is his, his excuse? Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I just make fun of him. He's like, yeah, about that, and then he just kind of gets quiet, <laughs> which is fine. No big deal. All right, gentlemen, let's get right to the nitty gritty and talk a little bit about Echoes of Alterac, which is like the, mm. the big event that is going to start going on uh, next week. And of course, the Battleground uh, Alterac Pass <clears throat> a little more in detail. What have you heard about it? What do you know about it? Did you play the map on the PTR? Or are you like, no, I'm not going to spoiler myself. I'm just going to wait until it's done next week. <laughs> and if you have played it, Nupkex, what are your first impressions mm -hmm. on the Battleground? Okay, well, yeah, I, I played it a bunch on the on the PTR, a like, good few games, like about 10 or so, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like first impressions, the map looks gorgeous, looks absolutely awesome. The art team knocked it out of the park. Um, Definitely. I, I love it. I love the fact it's a three lane map. They're often, I think, my favorite. They're, they often tend to be the easiest to balance as well, I feel, so I like that. I love that they have the bridge, the classic Alterac Valley <laughs> bridge. I mean, they yeah. changed it a little bit, but it's it's there in the middle of the map. So that's one of the most iconic things about AV was uh, the bridge at the Alliance base. It's in the middle of the map this time. That's there. Uh, I'd say first impressions in terms of balance and gameplay. I definitely found the objective is like 
really strong early game. It just has this insane amount of HP. So I found that the map does at the moment snowball a little bit. Yeah. So I wouldn't be shocked if like a week or two later after they release it, um, if they don't tone down at least the first objective or two just a little bit, because um, it feels a bit too strong right now. Um, I mean, it makes the map feel very dramatic, but um, yeah, it feels it's a little bit too strong for being uh, kind of fair. It'd be hard to come back. It almost um, reminds yeah. me of uh, Infernal Shrines when that map was released and the Punishers were just yeah. one-shotting people. <laughs> they were just smashing yeah. folks left and right. Uh, Pally, do you agree? Like, do you think the cavalry is a little too overtuned right now and games were oftentimes too snowbally because of that? So I think I've played about the same number of games right? Um, as, as Nubkicks. And what I found was um, that I agree very strong in the early game. But even the, if the first team got the objective, if the other team was able to take the next one, let's say, like let's say a team mm -hmm. fight didn't go our way and they were able to take it, um, mm -hmm. that is usually more than enough to catch them up, if not give them a lead. So I think mm -hmm. the fact that they just keep getting progressively stronger, like that third objective can just kill a base by itself, <laughs> it seems like. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, it's kind of like you said, it, it feels dramatic. It's like, well... We can't skip this objective. We have to go to it. So I, I like the emphasis on that because on some maps, it's just like, well, we can we can let them have that Volskaya robot. We can get this later. You know, it's not really that it's not that important. So I, I do like how Im, how impactful that feels. Right. Uh, but like I said, I, I haven't had any issues with like, well, I guess we just give up now because they got two objectives in a row. I always felt incentivized to go and fight hard, and I felt like I could come back with it. But maybe that's just me. What do you think about the bosses, right? The bosses, too, are very different from the other maps. They're alive. They can run around. They can smash people. They are pretty scary, actually, especially if you didn't kill all the keeps yet. So they have this AoE cleaving attack. They uh, run around. They reset, and they heal very fast as well. There's no shields, which is definitely something on the other uh, yeah. course. Do you think they're they're cool? You know, they're true to their... Uh, you know, um, other images in Alteric Valley and WoW, or do you think they're a little lackluster right now? I absolutely think stylistically they're amazing. Yeah, like seeing your core fight back is awesome, and I love that you can <laughs> top hat it and give it. Oh, the, can you? Uh, yeah, you can top hat it on Avatar and give it the um. What's the thing that repairs the mule? It's slipping my mind. Oh, the yeah, mule. Give it the yeah. mule. Yeah. You can heal it up with that too. <laughs> uh, I do feel like the armor should matter more. Because uh, he has three mm -hmm. stacks of armor for every keep mm -hmm. in the game. And as you kill yeah. one keep, he loses a stack of armor. But it just seems like once you get one keep down, you, I found that most teams are able to burn him down pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think so, it definitely yeah. makes sense if it was if it was a bit stronger, the, the core bosses. Um, especially seeing as the objective is strong and it pushes all the lanes. It's mm -hmm. like one of the maps where it's pretty reasonable that you could destroy like a couple of keeps. Um, you know, I don't feel Fairly like it... Yeah, fairly easily. I think like some other maps, like you're more incentivized to get, you know, just smash through one keep and go core. I mean, like a, a two lane map like Battlefield of Eternity, mm -hmm. classically, you know, um, or like Infernal Shrines, just push all the way that Punisher through, and then you've got that that thing down. You can go in this map because it pushes all the lanes. I think you know if they design it so you need to take down maybe even two keeps, or there's a big incentive. It's not necessary, but it's a big incentive. Um, I think that would work pretty well and be pretty epic. Um, you know. And the objective can be tuned in such a way that the map wouldn't last like way too long. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to happen either. That's always the struggle, right? You have to keep it at yeah. the 20 minute mark. Yeah. Yeah. But no, uh, yeah, I mean like the bosses are super cool. Uh, and that's one of the most iconic things about uh Altrek Valley is definitely, you know, you all rush to the end and you go, Oh my god, they're you know, the, the, the hordes attacking Vandar, we gotta rush Drekthar, and you all rush in and you haven't destroyed any towers, and then you all die. <laughs> and then you're just kind of sitting there like, oh, well, I guess we just lost the battleground. That's a classic, so good that they're in there. I always seem to remember at the end of WoW expansions, though, everyone being so overgeared. Oh, yeah. That it became just, you walk from your base <laughs> to the to the yeah. boss, and whoever has more DPS wins. Yeah, yeah. So, I think that, that was something that used to happen in the pre-patch, right? So mm -hmm. it wouldn't uh, have upped the hero levels yet. So let's say 100 to 110, you're still 100. But they would buff Alterac Valley, and they buff all the mobs up to 110. So suddenly this battleground, <laughs> like, you're getting soloed by the basic minions. And they're just insanely strong. It was completely nuts, yeah. That was the opposite effect of what I was thinking. 
it, like, exactly it's the, the start the pre-patch towards the end of the expansion it's literally like two different two different battlegrounds and wow. i'm sad we'll never be able to experience that shift in your <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, and uh, there, there's there's a couple of other cool gimmicks and mechanics on that battleground as well that make it a little different from the other maps that we can play on in Heroes mm -hmm. of the Storm. For example, the Null Mercs. They're pretty cool, and they're very similar to the, uh, whatchamacallit, the Fire Bats on Braxis, right? They also have this armor yeah. debuff. And mm -hmm. not sure if you ever notice it, guys, but when you destroy a keep, uh, instead of a catapult ranged minion that is going to outrange the core, which makes them so dangerous... There's going to be a yeah. null uh, melee uh, minion coming, which is pretty tanky, you know, deals extra damage, but it's not as dangerous as the catapults. So uh, it actually makes it easier for the bosses to hold their own and just slice the minions that are coming their way. Uh, what do you think of that? Yeah. I think Hogger is confirmed now, right? I mean, <laughs> Kalars would love it. I know he's been tweeting out several <laughs> tweets about Hogger and how I'm he just wants saying we had to be a rea reality. <laughs> we had fire bats on on Braxis for a while. True, that's true. Yeah. And yeah. then Blaze came out. Blaze, you just had to change the model a little bit. Hogger confirmed, right? Definitely, I think that's pretty much hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. But I think it's cool, you know, because uh, catapults are such a staple of of so many of the maps now. I think it's really interesting to experiment with creating a different type of like super minion, basically, mm -hmm. instead of the instead of the catapults. I think that's neat. I mean, like different maps. Some of them have different um, uh, model ones. Like they look different. Yeah. Like the Diablo maps have the Diablo style mm -hmm. ones. But this is really cool that it's actually just an entirely different uh, mechanic in how the uh, the super minion guy fe uh, works. Mm -hmm. So I mean, like it opens up some interesting possibilities about different things they could do on different maps, or even perhaps mixing up some of those older maps and going back, and you know. Uh, you could change out, I mean, the Diablo maps, maybe give it some sort of Shaman-esque minion that does little summons or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, they could do some different stuff to differentiate the maps a bit more with those Catapult guys. Mm -hmm. So, who knows? So, we mentioned, or you guys said as well, that right now the Cavalry seems a little strong. You know, it just mm -hmm. uh, sometimes brute forces their way into the enemy base and takes down several force, uh, forts, maybe keeps, uh, because it scales so well and has crazy buffs for the players as well. So... Blizzard decided to uh, postpone, right, the release of the map a little bit. It comes out next week, didn't go live with Irel. And I think I heard, yeah. I'm not sure if this is 100% confirmed, maybe you guys know, but I heard from several people that um, the new map, Alteric Pass, is not going to be available immediately in the ranked modes. So you're, yeah. you're not going to be able to play it in Hero League and Team League. And I th yeah. think it takes like another week or two until they release it. So I think mm -hmm. Blizzard is aware maybe that there needs to be a little bit of additional tweaking. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just, a, I think it's basically impossible to have a, a new map be perfectly balanced. It's just not mm -hmm. going to happen. There's too many factors. There's too many, you know, levels to play. You just can't possibly have a map that's going to be balanced across different metas as they adapt Looking over the course of the game. Right? Course it took, took several times, yeah, but now yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, yeah there you go. Um, and, like, you, you have to have the map work fairly for, you know, quick match, for unranked for team league and, and and ranked across bronze all the way up to grandmaster it has to be fair so it's just it's not going to happen on release you know it's going to take a few little tweaks here and there for sure um i'm not sure how long it is if it's one or two week delay mm -hmm. between it um going live for everyone and i don't know either did, did, are they going to increase the map frequency or anything like that you know like if you're playing unranked there's a higher chance you get so. a new map i'd hope so too but i have i haven't heard if that's a thing but it'd be kind of neat i mean i kind of like that they just delay it so mm -hmm. Not even from a balancing perspective. Like, let's say it does come out perfectly balanced. Still, there's going to be little nuances to yeah. what you should play on the map and what you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. it, it gives people yeah. more of a uh, more time to figure that out before they're putting their best foot forward, and you know their online egos on the line with the rank. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I wonder. I was going to talk about Hanamura a like, little. Let's, but, let's give Hanamura a little mm. bit of love. It's, <laughs> It's All been right. the, you know, it's been the beat <laughs> child quite a bit here from the community. So let's let's give it some love. I, I actually, mm. to be honest, in its final state where they uh, adjusted the core health a little bit and uh, tweaked the catapults and stuff like that, I actually found it to be very enjoyable sometimes. I still found some of the gimmicks a little too awkward, like the healing camps being able, you know, you could bribe them basically. Mm. Uh, those, that yeah. was always a little, eh, you know, a little iffy. But towards the end, yeah. I actually found that some of the fights and some of the gameplay was actually very enjoyable. And, and I always thought it 
got more slack than it deserved. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think I was playing Hero League that season, so I didn't get to experience it there, um, where perhaps with, you know, like, drafting and being super competitive, you could... I, I believe, like, Sylvanas push comps were, like, super yeah, popular. Asmo, you just Asmodan, Zagara. As, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I didn't see too much of that, um, or not as much as maybe a lot of other people might have. Um, but in my experience, I mean, I'd say I love uh, Altrack Pass. I think it's awesome. But visually, talking visually, my favorite map by far was Hanamura. I thought oh, it I agree. incredible. Uh, so cool. And I first, I, I liked the gameplay uh, for the most part. I liked the payload mechanic. I thought it was fun. It was different. I personally really enjoyed it as a, as a change of pace. Um, but like I said, I didn't play it super competitively, so I don't know how it would have maybe that was a bit off-putting for some people there from that's that's what some people have said anyway there was not really related to map balance but speaking of mm -hmm. how pretty hanamura was uh there yeah. was a press summit for heroes mm -hmm. 2.0 that i was mm -hmm. invited to oh. yeah. and the the entire uh building that they had was uh decorated to look like hanamura and it was oh, like wow. you walk in <laughs> and we didn't really know what was going on but then you walk in and you are yeah. in hanamura and it's yeah. like, oh, <laughs> oh, so this is what's happening. So, so I told like, uh, stunning cherry blossom petals in there and everywhere. Wow, wow. Just, just <laughs> grass, green stone, uh, were, like stone structures to look like Hanamura. <laughs> it was so cool, so cool. Uh, and they even set it off with like pink mood lighting too to Sweet. really, oh, wow. to really catch <laughs> all of it. It was really good. Nice. Uh, but I totally, I, I liked Hanamura. But I was also never in that situation where uh, the enemy team pushes into your base and then spawn camps you for the next 45 minutes. Because yeah. I heard some people uh, were experiencing <laughs> that. Uh, oh, I, never, I never quite had that trouble. Um, right. One thing I, I actually really uh, liked about Hanamura is the fact that the middle was just open. Yeah. Uh, there weren't any towers, there weren't any buildings, there were a few mercenary camps in there, but the middle of the map was huge. And it was a big area to brawl. Mm -hmm. um, and and Tim and I always joked that it was the best map for triple tap because of that. Because where are they going to go? <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you going to go? Yeah. I, go. I, I miss it's it. True. I, hope, it's true. I hope it's coming back soon. I really do. Yeah. It's, it's, here's, it's, here's a question. Would you guys like to see it come back with, with the payload mechanic? Or would you rather see it be a, a more <gasps> standard map? I think there were, there were some rumors about um, on, there only being one payload now. And teams basically well, have to fight over it, but mm -hmm. it's, nothing has been confirmed. Obviously, so I think it would be a shame, or it would be a little sad if they uh, removed the payload altogether and just make it another, you know, another standard map with maybe mercenaries, bosses in there, but nothing really else to be done. Uh, because the mm -hmm. payload is so iconic to Overwatch, right? It's like the thing yeah. to do. Uh, there's memes about it. There's <laughs> jokes about it. Um, <laughs> so maybe they they're just payload. gonna they're just gonna tweak the payload like like there only be one. Uh, give it different movement. Um, balance it, you know, in terms of damage it does on the core. Maybe there's no core damage at all. It's just giving your team bonuses if you get it through uh, experience or something like that. I, it would be really sad in my opinion if they removed it like altogether. You know, I'm I met a guy that works on the lead map designer. For him, no, just in like for for uh, heroes. Gotcha. Just he's the lead map designer. I met him, uh, and when the game was still in beta, mm -hmm. I had a I had a meeting at the the campus for something, and we got a chance to talk to him, and <laughs> it's so funny because you could tell how far ahead they were on map yeah. ideas. Because I was All like, right. <laughs> so what, what are you thinking about? And you just see his eyes light up. He's like, he had so <laughs> many, so many ideas. And I wonder if that sparkle in his eye that I saw was like, I wonder if we're up to Hanamura and uh, and and the new Altric Pass. Like, I wonder if those were already conceptualized and they were just like tweaking how they were that many years ago. Because literally he was he was starting to talk. And, and then the community manager was like, yeah, you can't talk about this stuff. <laughs> seriously, <laughs> seriously, seriously, that's so many years down the line. We can't go there. Wow. Say about oh. Heroes, too, right? They have Heroes stored up or in queue uh, for months and months yeah. ahead of time. So uh, it's actually cool if you think about it, like which Heroes were kind of teased and which Heroes were already, you know, in the making process. I think 
Uh, was it Decker Kane that was planned so far ahead already? They had to redo his kit. But you hear these stories like all the time when the developers, they come out and say, oh, you know, we've had this here in the pipeline for so long, but by the time it was actually their turn to arrive, we had to redo his entire kit because it was so uh, out of date, you know, old fashioned by then. Yeah, I'm sure it happens. I, I think they said typically it's about eight months or so, mm -hmm. is it, for them to, to like, basically seriously design a hero i think they said that with hands though it's about eight months yeah maybe it was design mm -hmm. might have been yeah the thing i wonder with with hands or with any of the overwatch heroes is their kits are obviously based off their design in overwatch what's gonna happen <laughs> so, isn't hanzo getting reworked in overwatch i think he so... did get the rework already he oh, did, he yeah. yeah. I don't play it, so I don't know. Okay, but like, does that like should we get rework then in heroes to make him match up, or is it okay for them to be different from to be the old Hanzo from Overwatch? Like, well, what did they do with that? That's tricky. They did totally get rid of Scattershot. He has like this fast attack thing now. Yeah. Hmm. But but I always th I always thought Scattershot didn't really feel like it did in Overwatch. Like it, it to me, it felt like two different abilities because in Overwatch you're aiming at the floor. Mm -hmm. So the arrows come up and hit the uh, usually a tank in the in the stomach or something. Uh, yeah. And heroes, it's all about completely shooting the other direction, <laughs> so they bounce back into them. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, Diva is also different from her Overwatch counterpart, right? It's still the old Diva mm -hmm. in Heroes of a Storm. Oh, is it? Oh, Don't okay. think she has the defense matrix anymore. Oh. Could be wrong though. I, I I haven't played Overwatch in quite some time, so I don't know. You guys mentioned. Um, oh the idea of a hero like being up to release but then they have to totally change his kit mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. in the beta fun I, i'm just full of fun facts i'm realizing this as I'm talking. let's go um, <laughs> thrall's kit uh originally was going to be uh Rhaegar. he was he had Rhaegar's kit mm -hmm. and they then they decided that that didn't really fit what they wanted to do for thrall so they made a brand new orc gave those abilities to him wow and then and then Thrall got a, a brand new kit, like a mixture between elemental and enhancement shaman. Yeah. Uh, but originally he was just going to be on a on a on a wolf the whole time, I believe. I uh -huh. believe that's what they said. Yeah. So like Rhaegar's wolf. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. I don't um, think that's a and, good and I do know that uh, usually at the beginning of the year, they're already working on the BlizzCon hero to be released. Yeah. Like towards New Year's, they're already working on the hero for the end of the year, which is crazy to me. And they'd have to, right? You have to yeah. be. You, you need to have heroes that knock it out of the park at BlizzCon. So I'm sure they're working on them very seriously for quite yeah. a while. For One sure. thing I want to see more of, though, um, is more heroes linked into like the big releases and stuff like that in their in their other franchises. Like you maybe touch on that a little bit later with the the hero chop shop secret hero, perhaps. Yeah. Like I want to say a couple of things about that when we get there, but. I mean, like, you know, let's say Battle for Azeroth, the next WoW expansion is coming out in like two months time. It would be really cool if the next hero they bring out around then is one that ties into Battle for Azeroth or likewise with any like particular expansion or, yeah. you know, like new Hearthstone expansion, you can maybe tie something in. I don't know exactly, but I really wish that that we'd be able to do more of that stuff. Like, I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't, seeing as, you know, they're working on these heroes for so many months. Like, I'm sure that they could jig it around so that yeah. one of the heroes they're working on will coincide in a cool way. I don't know. I'm just praying for Anduin, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be I think, cool. I think it makes a lot of sense to get Anduin right now. Yeah. I think it does. Oh, I have a fun fact. I believe that every single base hero from the Hearthstone game, like each of the classes, every single one is in Heroes of the Storm so far, except for the priest base uh, guy, which is Anduin. True. He's the only mm -hmm. one missing. Yeah. So there you go. It's a good point. I mean, some people always bring up Tyrande, right? Being like a Hearthstone priest and stuff, but she's a different kind of priest. She's not the the stereotype, holy disciplined priest that we know from World of Warcraft or that's like in Hearthstone, you know, with the classes. So that's right. We, we're she's, cheating. Like a, she's cheating. She's <laughs> cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but... I, I can't shoot owls in my priest skill book. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are right. Like we need the the stereotype priest in in uh, in Heroes of the Storm. We can, mm. we've got all the other classes, right? We've got Death Knights. We got Rogues yeah. with Alira. Yeah, we got everyone. So everyone. yeah, I'm I'm pretty sh I'm I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be Anduin. Yeah. Um, I don't have any insider information, but as far as as far as priests go, the when I think about priests, the two that come to mind, Prophet Valen. And mm -hmm. But we just and got an old man. I don't think they would. I don't <laughs> think they would add in another uh, space goat 
I don't think they would that soon after exactly. Ural. So it's yeah. got to be Andor. And we just got, got Decker yeah. Kane as well, like a few weeks, a few months ago, right? <laughs> He's like an it's old true. guy <laughs> healing people. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm fully yeah. agreeing with you guys. But like, it would work great then at BlizzCon, wouldn't he? Or like even one of the next heroes, either here or at BlizzCon, Battle for Azeroth comes out. It's like Anduin versus Sylvanas, Alliance mm -hmm. versus Horde. Here, here's also what I think is going to happen. The moment Anduin yeah. comes out, whether it's you know BFA related or not, Sylvanas yeah. is going to get a rework. And then we're going to have two shiny okay. new heroes, two shiny new oh. leaders uh, fighting it out. Hmm. They have been mentioning like Sylvanas is a bit placeholder exactly. at the moment. Exactly. That's why That's they did all the changes, right? That's why they did yeah. the auto attack changes. But everyone was like, yeah. "What the hell is that? That's not really above. That's not really what Sylvanas needed." But they said in the in the notes, in the def notes, uh, "We're preparing yeah. Sylvanas for future updates." <laughs> and that's the same thing they mentioned when they tackled her trait, right? So only the auto attacks would now disable yeah. buildings. How yeah, do you think that... they're gonna change possession this time? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what? Like, one of my most fun games on Alterac Pass, we were, like, getting our ass kicked. It was horrible. We were losing so badly. And I, I picked Possession. I'm having a great time with Possession. And then I went, oh, you know these new Catapult Knoll things that are insanely tanky? I can possess them with Possession. <laughs> yeah. And just send them back. It's like, it, then suddenly the map completely changed because they pushed so hard. It was great. Yeah. Do you guys remember oh. Possession used to be an ultimate that could take over yes. mercenaries, like, bosses? Could take over bosses. Wait, could it do bosses? I think at level twenty it did bosses. I'm pretty sure. Oh, wow, I don't maybe, remember that. <laughs> maybe I made that up. I don't know. But you could you could for sure take over mercenary. Yeah, games yeah that that one for sure. That one for sure. Wow. God, it's weird to think about how much the game has changed. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. It didn't take over bosses team. We have confirmation from Twitch chat. Did not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> for the record. <laughs> that's that's the rework possession that takes over the boss done but it definitely used to take over mercenary camps mm -hmm. which i always thought was fun that was actually one of the big things they were promoting when she came out uh, i remember they showed her uh in some press release thing she was like it can totally change the pace of the game and she just took over a seed giant and i was like okay <laughs> well, does it get more health? Because those those die real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Is she the only hero in the game that's ever had a, a heroic ability totally removed and a new one made up for her? Uh, Falstead also had didn't have hinterlands blast. It was oh, oh yeah, oh, what did he have? And they, I think they had to change it because of the wording and stuff, right? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> it was a one second channel for yeah. a. For a stun about double the size of Uther's. Mm -hmm. Oh, Uther's wow. Uther's Divine Storm. Wait, yeah, okay, are you... Wait, how long have you been playing the huh. game? You didn't witness that one? You weren't in the game when that one no. was live? No, I never played... I, I, like, played for about a week or something in the beta. I never uh, played okay, much. Okay. Uh, and I played a bit when it released. It's probably about a, about a year into the game when I started playing properly. Um, that makes me feel yeah, really like old I, right now, Pally. Yeah, like I, I'll tell you guys, I can tell you exactly when I started playing. I started playing just after the patch, like seriously playing after the patch where they removed S of Johan from Lee Meng. Mm. So I remember everyone oh. raging about S of Johan, and I was like, "What is S of Johan?" Well, nah, here, so let me let me that. catch you up. Uh, there used to be a red archon that could auto attack across the street, the screen, deal guaranteed crits, and did more damage than any assassin in the game. <laughs> Stitches had sprint, blink, and gorge. <laughs> so, and fishing hook so he could take you about four screens away from where he started divine hurricane was literally the entire screen oh, it was done man. everything and uther could um, use his abilities while he was in ghost form he oh could use what every ability while in ghost form. every ability yeah and oh, um nice. even auto used well. to be able Abathur used to be able to cast ultimate so if you had a xeratul oh. on your team you could vp twice in the time yep. it took Zeratul to get his cooldown back up. It was the wild, wild west, and man. It was scary. <laughs> double Tychus Odin was actually legit pro strat. <laughs> like you would have two oh, yeah. Tychuses and double Odin. Tychus <laughs> used to have an additional health bar, so you would just wait for your health to get low, pop Odin, be full health again, and still regen health <laughs> while you were in the Odin. It was oh, busted. Nice. The game was so busted back then. Oh, man.
Like, if, I think I'm pretty sure Calder <laughs> still has all of his older casts and VODs on his channel, on his YouTube channel. I'm not sure, but you can oh, probably oh. Uh, do a little bit of research. Just go all the way back to 2016, <laughs> 2015, because he was casting all of the tournaments back in the days, you know. So maybe if you guys yeah. are lucky and can find those gems, uh, you can still see the old Heroes of the Storm <laughs> madness, as Pally said. It was nuts. It was bonkers. I still have all of my old videos up, but I can't watch them for the life of me. I've, I've come a long way just as yeah. a presenter, not even as a player. Yeah. It's like it's like just being able to convey my thoughts is something that I've gotten so much better at over the years. But yeah, I have a bunch of old stuff. Squadron has a bunch of old stuff. We have some yeah. Red Archon videos. Yeah. So so fun, so fun. Nice, man. You know what? I think if I'm if I'm ever getting bored now, like if I ever need something cool to watch on, the, on a lonely Saturday night, I'm just <laughs> going to check out the TGN stuff and uh, I'm just going to rejoice mm. in the goodness of the old school Heroes of a Storm content. You know, I'm going to talk about YouTube for a second. You know what was weird? Um, my very first video was Falstad on Haunted Minds. I remember mm -hmm. it so clearly. That video was trending the other day. Well, I got really? like 30,000 views on that video out of nowhere. Like it just for some reason the algorithm was like, eh, someone will like this, and they started <laughs> they started cycling it back around to my subscribers again. Did some people actually so think weird. that was like new stuff? And did they comment like, hey, well, how do you do that on the false side? How did you get that ability in there? <laughs> <laughs> I think most of the comments Crazy. were like, oh my god, I remember this. <laughs> like I remember when this came out. Oh YouTube. All right. <laughs> Awesome. So yeah, maybe uh, to give a give a short recap, uh, to give a short verdict on Altrek Pass, uh, very much Pally approved, right? You're looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah. Napkicks. Good yeah, stuff coming Nupcakes in. Napkicks approved. Yeah, I think it's nice. awesome. And yay for WoW maps. Yes. Yay for Warcraft maps. Maybe Finally. we're gonna get more. Maybe for BFA I we're hope gonna so. have a special one. You know, maybe BFA gets a new battleground. And we're gonna have yeah. that in Heroes. Perfect. Boom as well. Awesome. So. Do next it. big uh, point of discussion here, next big topic we want to talk about and spend some time um, is the mid-season brawl. I actually totally missed to switch my arrows, so you, if you just follow the arrow, brrr, you now know our topic that we're currently talking about. Mid-season brawl, uh, <laughs> probably the biggest esports tournament that we've had all year uh, in 2018. Yep. Probably the biggest one next to BlizzCon, which is going to take place later in the year, uh, November. And... Mm -hmm. uh, Pally, I know that Nupkicks watched it a little bit because I'm stalking him 24-7. He just doesn't know about it. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, God. Were you uh, <laughs> or have you been following the midseason brawl a little bit? And if so, what was your your impression of it? Like, did you enjoy it? Okay, so this was going to be my confession. Uh -oh. I've been so caught up in E3 uh -oh. and I've oh. been sick. So I haven't I haven't seen any of it. I all oh. I all I've seen clips of <laughs> is Heku doing interviews and doing a nice. great job. And yes. the only other thing I know about it is that Gilly lost her luggage and her, <laughs> Kaldor, and Dread were stuck in an airport for like a day. So I, I, I was going to talk about like the, I was going to talk about like the human side of it and not the video game side of it. But then you just put me on the spot like that. I wasn't ready. I thought you had at least a little something. <laughs> I got nothing, nothing. <laughs> but. I was going to use this opportunity to hear what you guys thought and go back and watch those games that you guys recommended. Nice. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, think, but before but yeah, before go, go we ahead, jump in, go ahead. Well, 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 if you could pick one thing that you're most hyped about from E3 before you go into the hot stuff, what would that be? Oh, I thought I thought Bethesda's mm. show was fantastic. Everything Bethesda mm. talked about, I was on board with. Um, cool. But um, also the new Pokemon game for the the Switch. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Give it to me now. Uh, uh, okay, that's all. it's a hard one because I think they showed a bunch of awesome games. Um, some of them this were was still a a skeptical about, like uh, Anthem, mm -hmm. for example, or the yeah, new yeah. Fallout seventy six. I'm still like. It's too early yeah. to be really hype, you know, yet. It could be great, but it could also be just another walking simulator or just another, you know, boring grinder. Uh, the game that mm. really made me remain speechless, though, was Ghost of Tsushima. Like, the samurai game. I'm not sure if you saw it. Oh, is that from FromSoft? Is that the one? Uh, no, that one is Sekiro. There's a bunch of samurai okay. games, actually. So. Yeah, yeah, there's loads of them, right? <laughs> Sekiro was <laughs> You're uh, the, the From Software game, which is, uh, you know, looking great as well. And then I think they also mm. announced Neo 2. And yes, there's going to yeah. be Ghost of Tsushima, which is more like a... I don't know, man. It was hard to say which kind of game it's going to be, like whether it's open world or just uh, an action RPG. But it was 
visually <laughs> absolutely stunning. Like, if you haven't checked it out, feel free to look for it. Um, it's Ghost of Tsukushima. Uh, they had insane fighting mechanics there, visually absolutely stunning. And uh, as, you know, being the weeb that I am, it's just going to be <laughs> my, <laughs> my match made in heaven. Kendrick, I'm not gonna lie. I I just googled it there. I type it's like Ghost of Tsukushima. Yeah, I put like in Ghost of, and then I just smashed the keyboard, and it came up. It's great. <laughs> yeah. I was nice. like, I don't know how to spell that. Nice. I gotta check that out after. I know this isn't on the agenda, but E3, like growing up as a kid, was something I looked forward to every year, mm -hmm. and it was a goal of mine to be able to go because it was always just the media. You could only get in yeah. if you were in the industry. And I was like, one day I'm going to go, one day I'm going to do it. Now it's just open to the public and I still haven't gone. But uh, <laughs> it looks so like, oh, man, I'm so excited about video games right now. Right. Like It's like Christmas came early. Like so much cool <laughs> stuff came out of this year's E3. Like I, I think it was one of the better ones in recent years. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I think uh, there, there's so many games that people are hyped to. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if it's always been like that, but... No matter where you go, social media wise, everybody has their favorites, and there's no like this game is going to be the new thing. But there's several games who's going to like who look really, really promising. You have Death Stranded, you have Cyberpunk 2077. Oh my god! Oh yeah, it's going to be so <laughs> much hype around that game. Uh, yep, there's just so much good stuff in the pipeline. Hey, if I restart, choice. if I restart my Discord, will it break everything? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so, to be honest. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to do it. I'll be right back. All right. All right got you. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So um, until, right, until well, Pally time is back, Nupkix is going to yeah. be uh, in a little bit of a weird spot, and Pally you can't see at all, oh. so uh, he should okay. be back soon, though. Oh, yeah. I see. I see. On yeah. the oh, Pally's back. Yeah, so my Discord freaks out every now and then. It gets a little buzzy. No the chat was saying it wasn't sounding too good, so. Here we go. Hopefully that fixes. <laughs> and I think we can actually leave everything as it is. You guys... Just look as gorgeous on the stream as you did before. Awesome sauce. Oh, thank you. Discord is a good program. Yeah. It's, uh, it's yeah, a good sorry, software. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about good. that. No problem. No worries. So, yeah, I uh, was actually in a... Go, go, oh, go uh, for it. Go for it. Oh, oh okay. I, I was actually in a slightly different, like, slightly opposite position to Pally, which was I haven't seen all that much from E3 because I was watching all the heroes stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I tried to catch most of the games. Most of the games. Like, I mean, some of them I was working. I was watching them on a second monitor. Mm -hmm. um, but then I kind of sat down and watched some of my favorite ones, uh, some of my favorite teams. So yeah, I got to see quite a few of the games um, from the group stages this week. And yep. pretty good so far, and some surprises. Absolutely some surprises. Pretty good stuff indeed. And uh, as Nupcake said, big surprise, NA is back. You know, oh, a yeah. lot of people made fun of them. Uh, Temple Storm. Who? Who made fun of them? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I think the meme NA lol is probably still going to be there. It's still going to stick around, but it's never been mm -hmm. that unjustified as uh, right now. Because I think both Temple Storm and uh, Heroes Heart Esports, they played an amazing tournament, actually taking maps of yeah. the Korean teams, beating them yeah. even twice. Temple Storm beat Bal uh, Ballistics twice, uh, which yeah. is amazing. Well, three, three times, technically. Um, three times, technically. Yeah. Yeah. Like they beat them in a the best of two, like two uh, two zero. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, and then they came back for a tiebreaker, and then they crushed exactly. them again in the tiebreaker. Exactly. Um, so it's very convincing. Like they didn't just beat them like on oh they were off one day. Ballistics had a bad day. Mm -hmm. Like ballistics had a bad day. They they thrashed them. Ballistics had time to think about it, to analyze it, come back with a new strategy, and then Tempo just crushed them again. Very convincing stuff. Very convincing. And other regions, you know, Korea. I mean, Korea is kind of. I don't know. It's like a, it's like a double-edged sword, right? On the one hand, you have Gen G dominating absolutely everything and everybody. Temp is looking yep. good for the most part, and then you have Ballistics mm -hmm. actually struggling and going down to the lower bracket. So Korea is like, yeah. it's hard to say how good they are right now. Um, and then you have Europe also showing signs of weakness, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Method playing, you know, acceptable, fanatic, underperforming heavily as expected by a yeah. lot of people because of you know incoming roster changes and stuff. Ding yeah. just looking okay. And then Nupkicks, you have China, right? And China as a as a Chinese or ACC mm -hmm. China commentator myself just breaks my yeah. heart. It it didn't go too great for those guys, unfortunately. No, both teams eliminated. Yeah. Both teams gone. And then the two sort of wildcard region teams gone, Luna mm -hmm. Meow and Mindfreak gone yeah. as well. Yeah, definitely a bit of a bummer. Like like I was saying on the, the podcast a couple of weeks ago, I mean, I really enjoyed like especially the old school China play style where it's totally crazy, super aggressive. Yeah. 
uh, and they were like winning games and winning them crazily. And fortunately, it's pretty rough right now for them. They're not winning too many. I think China, the Chinese teams won four games in total, I think, over the course of the entire uh, week of group stages. Mm. So pretty rough, pretty rough it's for them. It's not enough, man. And, uh, you know, if, no. if you lose to Australia, which is considered to be like a smaller region, a minor region, then you're basically mm. uh, starting to become a minor region yourself. And uh, for Chinese yeah. fans who are like very passionate in everything China does, like in China, if, if you don't do well, uh, you're going to get scolded by the public, right? They're going to call you losers, and uh, they're not going to be very happy about it. And I think this puts wow. heroes in a, in a little bit of a bad state now for the fans, you know, and for the teams as Damn. well. Because it's not going to help mm. rebuild those teams that, you know, used to be so successful and used to achieve so much glory. Yeah. What what went wrong? Like what happened? How did how did they fall? Like do you, do you have any insight into what happened to them? I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Like I always try to stay positive about the Chinese teams. I'm always going to be like, oh, you know, yeah. this tournament they're going to show up strong. This time they're going to make everybody uh, prove wrong. They're going to prove everybody wrong. But they just continue to look yeah. worse and worse. <laughs> so Aww. at this point, I don't know what it is. It's it's probably the lack of organizations <clears throat> and the lack of you know right. um, practice that they have. True, they have their own HCC Pro League, but it's just not as competitive, you know? And if you only have two, three teams yeah. that are considered to be good at best, and the rest is just mm -hmm. like farming materials, how are you going to improve? And then China also being a little bit separated from the other regions, right? Um, because of yeah. government and stuff. Uh, I don't really think yeah. that helps. So I, I would like to bring up a topic for competitive heroes. That's, sure. that's not really mm -hmm. focused on teams. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, how do you guys feel about the hero diversity? in pro matches do you think it could be better do you think it's okay uh, i i personally this would love to see the whole roster used yeah. like i feel like that's the game designer's goal right but this tournament actually has been very very diverse i think yeah um we've seen i mean gen g the best team in the world plays Sarge and hammer i think twice <laughs> right they get away oh, really? everyone's like what yeah They're like no no yeah we're playing Sarge uh, and hammer yeah there you go and then you yeah. have a team like method <laughs> who just busts out a no support avatar comp right they, they have no support Abathur is their only support, if you will, and they're just going to snowball from there because of, you know, outsmarting their opponents. Uh, they played Valera, no support, mm. Abathur. That's what they did. Wow. And won. They that beat sounds, the Chinese see, that's so it. exciting. Yeah. Like, that just brings <laughs> a smile to my face. It gets exhausting to, for me playing Hero League and say, seeing the same, you know, same heroes banned, mm -hmm. the same heroes picked every time. I'm, I'm definitely glad that's branching out. Like I said, I didn't, yeah. I didn't catch... Any, I, I didn't catch any of it. I was gonna say I didn't catch much of it. I didn't catch any of it. So knowing that, I'm way more excited to go back and and look yeah. at these matches because that sounds <laughs> so cool. That sounds yeah. so. I think it's almost like the the straight up opposite from last year, uh, right? In which we had double support, and so it was mm. everything yeah. was just focused on supports all the time. Which supports are gonna be in the game? You know, we're gonna have Ariel every single time. We're gonna have Tassadar every single time. Malfurion, mm -hmm. and then it's just gonna be. Hyper carry versus hyper carry, and it's not really you know that diverse because there's only so many heroes that you can play with double support. Uh, but now yeah. that double support is gone, and teams just getting super creative about it, I think it's such a blast to watch. And I think it also yeah. uh, reflects itself in the viewer numbers, right? Nupcakes. I think compared to other mm. tournaments in the group phases, uh, we never really had 20k uh, viewers in just the group phase. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I'm actually not an expert on this uh, at all. I, I don't pay too much attention to how, how many viewers are watching, so I actually don't have any facts to compare across them. Uh, so you're going to have to carry that one, mm. unfortunately, Kendrick. <laughs> but it's doing really good, is it? That's great to hear. Because it's been, I have to say, like it's been a really good tournament so far. Mm. I think like when when HOTS started doing some of the tournaments, I mean, definitely there were, you know the production was good, but there was definitely room for improvement, and yep. I think they've definitely made those improvements. Like, it's... I think this tournament's been really, really well put together. Like it's running really well. Um, Hardly any technical delays. issues, right? It's just yeah. Been smooth. I, I mean, yeah, it's crazy. Game after it's game, super bam, bam, bam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've they've been doing a stellar job of that. So great to see that's being recognized. And Heku is there. Yeah, Heku yeah. is there. Yeah. yeah, seriously, I'm so excited for her. That's so cool. <laughs> Because it really she's shows, like, it. she's been working so hard in all those interviews that she did, like, off tournament. Yeah. Uh, she's mm. been interviewing players uh, online on her YouTube channel. Um, so, yeah, it's really good to see that Blizzard acknowledges the work and that she's also, uh, you know, doing pretty well uh, on the stage and interviewing people. It's, it's very exciting. It's not that easy, actually, if you, especially no. if uh, there's Korean oh, yeah. players or Chinese players or players that are not as good at English. Uh, you have yeah. to deal with a, mm -hmm. with a translator as well. It's not that easy. 
Yeah, no, I'd say that's it's super challenging, and she's done a great job. I mean, mm -hmm. the experience she has doing interviews with other with pro players uh, over the years is definitely standing to her credit, which is awesome. But yeah, I don't, I don't envy her. I would hate to do that job. No, <laughs> I'd be is, terrified, man. Oh yeah, that's so hard. That, that's yeah. so hard because it's it's hard to go into that with pre thought up questions too because yeah. usually it's relevant to the last match that just happened. So not only do you have to watch it intently and not miss something. You have to come up with a question that's engaging for your audience and maybe yeah. uh, lets them know a little bit more. I was interviewed at um, the European Championship like two or three years ago or something, and that's the most nervous I've ever been. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't even have to come up with the questions. I had the easy part. They were like, what do you think of this draft? And I was like, <gasps> Malfurion's in it, and he roots things, and he was good. <laughs> like, it was so bad. So I I I'm, I'm I completely agree. I would not want to be in her shoes. That is, that is a difficult task. Yeah. I think. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the viewers right now can take a look at the tables as well and the uh, the standings. You know who's going to make it to the upper bracket, who's going to make it to the lower bracket. Uh, group A yeah. and B. There were only two groups, so we have all the European teams in there, which were three uh, three Korean teams and two North American teams. Uh, who mm -hmm. showed up big time. As you can see, Temple Storm securing second place. I don't think anyone predicted that. Like, I know some people were saying, you know, this is the time, this is the year for an A uh, to show up strong and to step it up. But nobody would have expected Temple Storm to play second in that group. Uh, ahead of Ballistics, ahead of Fnatic, which is just insane. And in Group B, you know, a little bit of a surprise there as well. I would have actually expected CE to maybe make it out, uh, but they fell to Heroes Hearth, could make it. Tempest looking good. Dignitas looking a little a little weak here and there, but uh, I'm pretty sure this Saturday, by the way, things are going to continue. So the playoff stage is going to continue there. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, we're going to have two awesome days of Heroes Esports. And even if you're yeah. not like the biggest of Esports follower out there, um, I think it's safe to say that supporting Heroes Esports is so important if you care about the game. Like even if you uh, don't play competitively yourself, uh, showing those teams the support and keeping the scene, you know, alive and just giving the game exposure online is just so important. And let me tell you this. If you ever make it to any event where uh, Heroes Esports event is shown, just go there because the atmosphere is absolutely electric. Oh, absolutely. So good. And they usually do such a good job um, with sound design alone. Yes. So so even if you are new and you you don't know what the talents are, you don't know what the heroes do... Just sitting there and watching it as like the spectacle that it is 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 just yeah. fun. It's just yeah, fun. it's awesome. Can all we, right. Kendrick? Yeah, can we make predictions. I think we should all make a prediction <laughs> oh, as to man. who's going to the four teams in the quarters. Uh, oh, sorry, not the quarters. The four teams in the semis, the two in the grand finals, and then predict who's going to take take the cake. All right, um, man. We'll see. So <laughs> the thing is, if you lose. Uh, in the lower bracket, you're out of the tournament. But if you lose in the upper bracket, right, you get another chance to redeem yourself. So yeah. I think it's very likely. Like, I'm just going to say this. Genji wins the whole <laughs> thing because they've yeah. shown no sign of weakness. And mm -hmm. I think it's going to be Genji versus Digging Test in the grand final. Okay. What about you? I, I was actually going to say the same thing. <laughs> I was going to say Can't the same thing. I think Genji... I think Gen G probably goes straight to the finals. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's really cool. The first game this Saturday is... Is, uh, or is it the first game? It is actually it's not, going it's, to be Gen G versus Ding and Test. Like, that's going to be the Gen first series of the, of the Saturday. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, yeah. So, I mean, I'd love to see that as a rematch because I think that'd be super exciting. Um, I, I'd say for the semis, I'm predicting it's actually going to be the top four teams. I, I, ho I hope. I think it'd be really exciting and interesting. Gen G, Dignitas, Tempest. Uh, and Tempo Storm, that we'd see those yeah. guys go into those, some of those finals. Uh, and then I think pr probably from what I've seen so far, I'd really like to see Genji Dignitas. I mean, I think, you know, Tempest is, is higher seeded than Dig right now, mm -hmm. I guess. But I, I really like Dignitas as a team. I think they're extremely talented guys. Like, they're just awesome. Very smart about the game. So I, I think they defend the a really title. good chance. It's the only international yeah. title that hasn't been won by Koreans. Oh. oh. Is I that right? Huh. Yeah. Who won last year? Uh, Fnatic. Ah. Oh, oh yeah. Fnatic huh. are technically awesome. speaking the reigning champions, but <laughs> as as much yeah. as it pains me to admit it, they're just not looking good. <laughs> not this yeah, time. Yeah, they're definitely having a tough time. I mean, it's understandable, right? They're one of right. the teams. Their roster is changing up. Yeah. Some of those players are are you know getting ready to move over to other teams. So mm -hmm. 
it's just impossible to expect. You know, I, like, hopefully they'll do well. I hope they do really well uh, coming up in, in, uh, this weekend, but I wouldn't expect them to get into the, the grand finals. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, guys, if you feel if you feel the need, the urge to uh, you know engage and get involved in the discussion, you can always tweet at us. You see all of our Twitters on your monitors right now uh, at MF Pally Time, Nupcakes, Kendrick Swish. If you guys want to let us know like who your favorites are, what your favorite teams are, if you want to guys let us know about uh, your thoughts on Altrick Pass and all the other stuff that we talk about on the show, feel free to always get in touch. Uh, we love to read your your comments and stuff, so don't be shy. We don't bite, you know. It's all it's all fine. <laughs> Pally maybe bite bites you because he's a board player. Uh, yeah, I bite them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still in the nipple. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, my prediction, I always pick yeah. my teams based off of people that I like. Okay. <laughs> like, I follow my heart, oh. not statistical <laughs> analysis. Um, okay. And I started rooting for Dignitas back when Bakery was on it. Gotcha. And, and I really like Bakery. So I still like Dignitas. So they're going to win. Nice. <laughs> they were <pretty> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the human side of it, right? <laughs> yeah, the human side of it. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's cast aside the MSB, the midseason brawl, and move on to uh, one of my personal baby girls. I think she's she's grown very Big dear to girl. me. Um, new hero, Irel, the paladin, the light of hope. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of controversy around her right now. Uh, Reddit, if yeah. you check out Reddit right now, there's people defending her. <laughs> oh, yeah. But there's a large majority uh, complaining about her. Uh, which faction do you belong to? Or which faction would you rather, you know, support in a way i'll go last kendrick what do okay. you think so you, you you think she's garbage no i'll go last <laughs> oh okay okay i thought you go for the last faction all right uh if you want me to go first i think she's definitely playable i don't think she's underpowered in a way that you cannot win with her but i think she's definitely hard to make work simply because of how her kit works you need to know when to cast which ability um, you need to know when to avoid those interrupts, and there's a lot of heroes that can mess her up. Um, so I think if they if they maybe give her a little bit of love in terms of you know mechanics, I don't think she needs numbers. Um, I think if they make her channels a little faster, maybe if they give her more range on the jump, for example, on the leap, maybe that's mm -hmm. going to help her out. But I think you also got to be very careful on how to buff heroes because I think Irel might be one of those heroes that gets very OP very strong if uh, very quickly if you buff her too much. Okay. What do you say, Nick? Right. Uh -oh. Okay. Okay. This uh -oh. is gonna be good, right? This is gonna be good because Pally, you're gonna have, you're gonna be able to to be the judge on this. Because I'm gonna go the exact opposite way from. I Kendrick. knew it, and I love it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not a real debate. Um. So yeah, I I think uh, I think Irel's mechanics are great. Um. Mm -hmm. I th the hero she's struggling at the moment. Like just looking at it now on hot slogs, uh, her win rate at the moment overall is only thirty eight point seven. It's the lowest in the game. Yeah. Um, I mean, like Blizzard typically looks at healthy win rates, forty-five to fifty-five. Mm -hmm. That's very broad overall across all um, levels of play. So it's it's broad, but yeah, she's definitely even that broad um, standard. She's below. Um, I, I think she's extremely fun. I I really like. I know I saw some stuff yeah. on Reddit today. People don't like the charge up stuff like that. I actually really like the charge like up on her abilities. Well. I think it's cool. I think it's unique. Um, I think all of her abilities are fun. I think her kit is a ton of fun. The two heroics are very interesting. She's got a bunch of great talents. Like Divine Steed is is super. Uh, it, it's a lot. It's a ton of fun to use that one. You know, zipping around. It's a little busted. Um, it's a little busted. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a little bit too strong compared to the other ones on that tier. But if I were yeah, Rhaegar, I, I, I would be so <laughs> jealous and so angry. You know, yeah, Irel gets yeah. that freaking mounting ability. She gets a bonus movement speed uh, movement speed buff as well. Yeah. I would. I think they should mm. give that to Rhaegar now. Baseline. <laughs> Baseline. Yeah. <laughs> they should they should give Regar all of Iral's abilities baseline, probably. That'd be pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimate healer. But no, I, I think I think her kit, just the way there's mechanics of it are great. Mm -hmm. Um I, I think if it was me, I'd just be looking at numbers tuning with Irel. Um and you know, like, it does seem that she's undertuned at the moment. You know, look at upping like some of that damage a little bit. I know they actually did some of that between the PTR and the live servers. They upped her, I think her basic attack and her Q damage a yes. tiny yeah. bit. Yeah. So I'd like to see those tweaked a little bit uh, or, or other things along those lines. Small number tweaks. Like Kendrick said, I think she could very easily become super OP. Uh, you know, any a lot of heroes have that potential. But if mm -hmm. you're cautious with it, just slowly buff her up. Yeah. I think she'd get to a great spot pretty quickly. I mean, 
The only thing I'd maybe would change in terms of mechanics is um, not the charge up, but rather the jumping animation of her E. Mm -hmm. Maybe make that a little bit more That's generous because it's it's pretty slow. Yeah. Um, I feel that holds her back from being like a, a main tank. Do That's you one think thing she's we could slow too much while charging up? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I I kind of like the idea that she gets slowed down a bit. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, you could maybe make her slightly faster, but I think it's I think it's fine. I think it'd be really annoying if she didn't get slowed down. And she jumps in, and you, you see she's charging up her hammer, and there's absolutely nothing you can do yeah. about it. That would kind of suck. Um, I think it's fine. Uh, and I think I think it, it feels pretty good, actually, from what I can tell. Uh, that's my opinion, anyway. Pally, you've heard you, both sides. What did you say her win rate was? Uh, her win rate is 38.7%. Yeah, oh, yeah. mine's a hundred percent. That's pretty good, uh, man. But I, I, I gotta jump in there real quick before I let Pally continue. Um, I think yeah. the reason, or one of the reasons, why her wound rate is so low. True, her kit might not be, you know, the most polished, the most competitive one right now. But I think another big mm. thing is that she requires a lot of skill because of the charging and stuff. And I think a lot of players, especially in the beginning when the hero is new and you have to figure out like how to play that, uh, I think a lot of players may not play her to the fullest of her um, potential. And I think oh, that yeah, also absolutely. falls into that category of her performing yeah. so miserably right now. I mean, yeah, I mean that happens with every new hero, yeah. right? Is I mean, there's there's always a learning period, and the win rates mm -hmm. nearly always go up, usually quite a bit. Um, some heroes, of course, I mean, like Phoenix, for example, was just crazy overpowered on release. So they just started about a 60% win rate and you know they, they don't go anywhere near going down until they're touched, <laughs> uh, they're tuned. But yeah, I'd say definitely also to throw it in one difficult thing with the REL, especially if you play in a solo lane, um, it's the unique difficulty of playing a solo lane hero is those 1v1 matchups. Mm -hmm. It's just simply that knowledge gap of knowing how does this hero match up against these other ones. So it's very easy to pick her into something, think, oh, she's probably going to do really well here. And then you get stomped in your solo lane. And yeah. if you're playing on a map like Brax's Holdout, well, I mean, you thinking you're picking a winning lane and you're not, that could literally lose you the game. So, you know, that's something that people will figure out over the next you know, couple of weeks as well. So that will make a big difference. It's a particular solo lane hero thing, I think. On, on the topic of being a solo laner, I think you have her talents open right now. That level one, yeah. I forgot what it's called, where you heal after every spell cast is so incredibly strong. Oh, yeah. Just trading. Yeah, it's That's so incredibly strong at just trading yeah. into heroes. And I always feel absolutely <laughs> confident because of my 100% win rate. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> confident that I can win the hero brawling portion of any lane. Like, it hasn't even yeah. been close. I just walk away with full health and they leave with nothing. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> um, there's no lane clear at all. Zero, like, none. So... If you're going up against a Zagara or something, she could just push you into your towers, and then you you sit there and you yeah. watch that. Uh, you don't really get the opportunity to brawl that hero because you can't push back the wave that they're starting. Uh, I had a, a Braxis game where I was 1v2 in the top lane, and I was winning it, but they got a little bit of charge here and there, and I could not push back the Zerg wave at all. Like, my team was pushing the core, but their team just had Zerg pushing, and it managed to get a keep down on the first wave just because I couldn't I could not fight it back even a little. So hmm. if there was anything that was gonna be changed about her, it feels super awkward to have a solo laner that can't clear a lane. Like Blaze clears him no problem. Uh Malthiel can clear him no problem. Uh Leora can kill him clear him no problem. Mm -hmm. But a bunch of a bunch of off lanes. Like that's why they're off lane. They have good sustain and they can clear lanes. Like that's what they do. Um so I, I would like to see maybe that Q talent at level one maybe give some extra damage to minions or something with that. Give her a reason to use it other than just healing. Um, but as far as the rest of her kit, I, I do think she's she's strong in a, in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways. Uh, right. The healing talent level four, I've, I've been able to put out... It's um, so good. Substantial, substantial amount of healing. <laughs> if in, only we could see healing done, right? I know! Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> That's always driven me crazy, and I've given feedback after feedback after feedback on that. And I don't know. Technology isn't there yet, Pally. Just, just, you know. <laughs> but it should, it should be. <laughs> um, I, I just really like the – I think she is um, – we did a, on a, one of our squadron shows, we did a Malfurion, Tracer, Yorel combo. Yeah. And Malfurion can heal Tracer wherever she goes. And then as Yorel – 
I could just follow Tracer because she has so much sustain that I was never worried about dying. And that heal on your yeah. trait every 10 seconds was able to like keep Tracer alive through the stupidest things. And then you <laughs> my, get the 16, my... the 16 cooldown reduction on your trait, and you're going to heal yeah. even more. Even I more, always yeah. go for the cleave. I feel like oh. the cleave uh, fixes a lot of the problems I have in her kit. All of a sudden, she mm. does have All right. lane clear. All of a sudden, she does have a little bit of burst damage. My main complaint about her is that um, I don't feel like she is um, a flashy hero at all. I, th I think it's very difficult to see what Yorel is doing unless she knocks back, knock, like pushes someone mm. into a corner and then body blocks them or something. Like mm. her damage is not fast. Her healing is not fast. <laughs> you know, it's slow healing over time. You can keep yourself alive really well, but it's not like you, at least with the builds I use, it's not like you go from 0% to 100 mm. in it. You know, it's no ancestral heal going off. Or anything no, you like think that. you think uh, because she's not that flashy and she's not that hard hitting, that's why she's so loud. You know, she, that's why she's screaming a lot. To, to, to <laughs> she's a little bit more flashy <laughs> because she's loud, dude. She screams all the time. She's very loud. And I, I think her ultimates, the fact that they don't really impact other heroes at all, is mm -hmm. odd. I think mm. that's odd. Um, but strong hero, I think I like her. I feel like I can play her pretty well. I feel confident in most matchups. It's just I really don't know when I would pick her because if you can't clear the lane, yeah. then you're going to lose your lane over time. I don't know. Yeah, like what, what I found, I didn't play too many. Like I, I played, again, I played one game against one of my friends who's very good, and he was playing Zagara, and that was that was tough. I feel like Aurel right. struggles against ranged heroes. It's like, I mean, <laughs> you start charging up your Avenging Wrath or E to jump in. You've got these big purple wings spread from your back. They kind of see it coming. Um, and then once you've jumped in, uh, like they just walk away. You know, that's all you've yeah. got. Um, so it's pretty hard to, to fight against ranged heroes. I haven't found her wave clear to be that bad myself. Like my the typical really? combo, let's say I'm doing like Divine Steed rotating between a couple of lanes. Mm -hmm. Like E into the middle of the minion wave so it will mm -hmm. splash on all of them. Then use Divine Purpose, the trait, to pop an instant full power Q and mm -hmm. charge up the W, hit the minion wave. It, it, clear, it does most of the minion wave's health and damage. I found it to be pretty decent. Um, okay. And then you just zip off Divine Steed to the lanes. And now she's not as fast as other heroes, but it's not, it's not terrible. Like, I, I don't feel like yeah. I'm stuck in the lane. There's no I, way I, I can kill this minion. I think one thing she's it's got going okay. on in her favor is relatively low mana cost. Like, I don't think you've, yeah, she you've ever encountered massive mana problems like Turiel, for example. Like, Turiel. Oh. Most of the time, <laughs> yeah. he's losing lane because he's thirsty. He's hungry on the mana like yeah. uh, hardly any other hero. But it really can spam a lot. And that sometimes makes up for the lack of like raw burst yeah. damage that she has, right? Yeah. Um, another cool thing as well, like just to mention that those visuals, I think it's like mm -hmm. she's not, she doesn't do anything flashy. But one flashy thing about her mechanics that I think is the way <laughs> that her abilities are so visual. So oh, that the sure. other players in the game pick up on them, like like the big purple wings come out. Then mm -hmm. when it's fully charged, they they go gold. Same with the the big hammer swing. Same with your charging up. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. Um, Absolutely, uh, it's sure. great visual design. It makes it it good, uh, easier for your team to play around you, and it makes it easier for the enemy team to play around it uh, as well in a pretty right. healthy way uh, to counterplay. So I think that's awesome. So what one you, of oh, sorry, uh, the one of the animators at uh, for heroes, uh, mm -hmm. her name is Lana. And she has been posting these little tidbits of like how she actually got around to making these animations. Mm -hmm. And she'll sit ah. a camera, she'll sit a camera down, and she'll act out a few different ways that she thinks you know Bubble Hearth might look or something. Yeah, yeah. To get an idea of how to actually animate the character, and she mm -hmm. she had one figuring out <laughs> Bubble Hearth, and she had one where she was outside with a giant stick trying to figure out what like some of her. <laughs> Swinging animations, oh, like and stuff. That's Super epic. interesting. Really, really that good. That's a cool stuff. job. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Awesome. Really, really interesting stuff. <laughs> oh, I had the chance or the honor to uh, do a live stream last BlizzCon, I think, and Lana was my special guest, you know, oh. on stream. Oh, mm -hmm. Lo loved talking to her about the game. Like, she's super passionate and she knows a lot of oh, stuff geez. about animations and uh, how to make them look good. So, I, I, I watched that as well. It looked really nice. Uh, and she's a great host for the One Minute uh, HCC video series. HCC oh, yeah. One Minute, mm -hmm. I think it's called, or HCC Minute. I, I don't remember H the title. Minute. It's bad. It, yeah, it's that's HCC never a minute. There long. we go. It's always long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, 
one thing, like, do you guys, so there's two scenarios we have, right? And the community mm. loves and hates both of them. But which one would you rather prefer? Um, the case of Irel, where, she, where a new hero comes live, feels a little undertuned and then gets buffed or adjusted and changed uh, bit by bit. Or would you rather prefer the opposite, which was the case, for example, with uh, Phoenix, uh, with Maev, where the new hero comes out and it's just melting faces left and right? I'll, I'll take this one first, because I've mm -hmm. talked mm -hmm. uh, straight to producers about this years ago over a few bottles of wine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we were all speaking the truth. And I was like, <laughs> so, so what do you think, what do you think when uh, people say you just release heroes that are strong, so you sell more of them? And he was visibly angry. He was like, oh. that's so stupid. We would never do that. I can't <laughs> believe people think that. But it's, but I mean, it's, it's true. When, when Maev comes out and she can pentakill a team, uh, people are going to want to buy that more. Uh, yeah. I think the solution is. Uh, disable those heroes in Hero League and competitive matches until the balance is figured out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can kind of tune it a little bit. But at the same time, a lot of very valuable, excuse me, information comes from Hero League and the competitive side and the best of the best players playing her and the worst of the worst players playing her and seeing, you know, where the chips fall. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a it's a difficult situation. I would prefer that they're undertuned, personally. I I think it allows you to figure out what works on the character as is when they're a little weak. Like Urel right now, I, I think I have a pretty good idea of Urel. When she gets buffed, <laughs> sign me up. I'm excited. <laughs> I want to go in. I want to I want to take what I've learned and show people, you know, just how cool the character can be when she is tuned up. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. Know. It it is difficult. Scenario. I think from a yeah. psychological point of view, it feels way better as a player if you get something rather than if something's being taken away from you. So yes. mm -hmm. if you Absolutely. if you start playing Irel and you know she's a little busted, um, and you feel good because she's a little busted, and then Blizzard decides to take things away from you, so you're not as busted anymore, you're gonna you're gonna very likely feel very upset. Um, and you're going to be like, damn, I want that back. You know, I can't play that here anymore. She's so bad right now. Although in reality, she might be balanced. S of Johan. <laughs> <laughs> you know I what? Heard about Pally, I got another one for you. I got another one for you. Yeah. Self ancestral. Oh, no, no. Oh. It's too painful. It's too painful. <laughs> I used to be a Rhaegar man. And I just want to heal Same. anybody else. Same, I would just bro. go attack. I feel you. I feel you. I just go attack everything and ancestor myself. <laughs> uh. Nutcakes, yeah. man. Let us know. What um, do you think about it? Okay. Okay. I. I mean. I. I think. I. It's a tough one. I think it's really hard. I lean more towards the side of I prefer them to be a little bit undertuned than mm -hmm. than overtuned. Uh, and what I'd like to see is them to okay release a new hero. I feel like at the moment they wait two weeks to patch that hero. Um, I don't see any reason with heroes that are clearly like, if we go a week, you know, we're a week into this patch and Aurel is still 38% win rate. I think it's not unreasonable to give her a small number of tweaks, like nothing major, just small number tweaks to boost her up a little bit, just tide her over for that extra week. Right. And then at that two week mark, give her a bigger patch where you go more thorough. I think that'd be nice. I, I really wanted that with Phoenix. Like I didn't, it didn't bother me personally because I was playing Hero League when Phoenix was out, like just exclusively Hero League. So he's just banned every game. So I never, never mm -hmm. saw him, but I felt bad for people. It's like, it must suck for people in quick match because if you're going into a game, the other team is Phoenix and you don't, you're going, ouch, okay, this hero is blatantly overpowered. Yeah. And for two weeks now, <laughs> if I go into games, half of the game it feels, it can often feel is dictated by whether that hero is on your team or on the enemy team. Um, so I, I would like to see that, you know, okay, it's very difficult to actually have a hero be perfectly balanced when it comes out if they're over, like, obviously. Like, if they're still fairly balanced, you know, they, we kind of think they're a bit too strong, but it's not really coming through yet. It's fine to wait the two weeks, but I'd love to see that one week. Nothing major, just a little bit of a thing, a little bit of a t small tweaky balance patch to bring them back to a more reasonable level. Um, and then I think, you know, underpowered heroes will feel yeah. fine. So by the time you realize they're underpowered uh, or overpowered, they're probably going to be tweaked here or there. So, you know, it's not that big of a deal for most players, I would say. I think that's like um, the the, yeah. the most important thing, like Blizzard being willing or um, trying at least to fix heroes 
that are new very rapidly, right? We had a, I think they're yeah. actually doing this uh, really okay and really well right now, but there was a time where they took an absurd long time um, they until they did anything about OP yeah. heroes, about weak heroes. Um, and I think I'm really glad that they're willing to just listen to the community a little bit more, do more tweaking and testing, and then just throw out these yeah. minor balance updates. Um, I think yeah. another good example that Definitely. we did have in the past where things were working really well in that regard was Zarya. Uh, Zarya came out, hit like a wet noodle, didn't do anything. Then they overtuned mm. her a little bit a few days later. Yeah, and they took that. Now she was super OP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She literally became yeah. the strongest woman in the world. And, yeah, um, <laughs> <Let's>, uh, <laughs> I'm the strongest. <laughs> uh, and then they tuned her down a little bit, and now she's in a really good spot. I think Zarya hasn't been changed in months, right? So. Um, yeah, she's got she gets little tweaks actually. She's got a mm -hmm. couple of little tweaks, a little bit more Q damage, I mm -hmm. think a little bit more basic attack damage, small things. Yeah. Um and I think the same yeah. thing they can do with Irel, right? If you just give a little bit of love to Irel, maybe do some quality of life uh changes in terms of like uh channeling time, movement speed and stuff. I think she will see a decent amount of play very very soon. Mm. In that for same sure. vein though, they can test and test and test and yeah. test for for 8 months, let's say. The the length of the character development time as far as we know. And then within 20 minutes of the character being live <laughs> with millions of players, you know, a little optimistically, millions of players jumping in and playing that character, they'll get more data in those 20 minutes than they yeah. will in all of those times uh, testing internally just because of the sheer yeah. volume of people. So yeah. I, I yeah. it has to be such a huge challenge to come out with something and have it perfect, right? Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't imagine the, that kind of stress of being like, "Well, yeah. here's my baby. Let's just go throw it out <laughs> into the world and see how it goes." Yeah. Can't imagine it. Yeah, I, I mean, what I will say is that okay, sure, the balance on heroes can be a bit dodgy when it comes out, but definitely the last several hero releases, off just off the top of my head, have been, I would say, exceptionally well designed mechanically. Uh, from a mechanical perspective, on the heroes, sure. like they do interesting stuff, like Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure, he was super OP, but. Um, like the, just the way the hero works, he does a bunch of really cool uh, things. So I think that's great. Same with Aurel. I mean, Deckard Kane as well. They do they do cool stuff. So I think they've been doing really good in terms of the, just the basics of the hero kit. And then you know it's it's impossible to have it perfect on the balance. So it can't really happen. Quick Where question: we, one, a one in a off, million. Off topic. Um, with the latest hero releases, like let's say Maya, Phoenix, Deckard Kane, and Aurel, and some of the reworks they did, like uh, Diablo, for mm -hmm. example, which is amazing in my opinion. Um, yeah. Do you think so far the concept of them, you know, toning down or slowing down on the hero releases, but taking care of reworks and other stuff in the game is uh, working well? I just want to know why they don't. Bring... Okay. I d yes, I do think it's working well. <laughs> to, to, answer, to answer that question, and for the life of me, I can't understand why they don't acknowledge Jim Rayner is still Jim Rayner. <laughs> I, I think deep down, somewhere in the pits in the dungeons of Blizzard. They're gonna have this scroll sealed, you know, and in that scroll <laughs> lies the rework of Jim Rayner, and it's gonna be glorious. And they just wait for the perfect time to unleash it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like we've we've heard he's getting reworks. We've heard he's getting reworks. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Just just give us a little, just give us a little update. How's that going? How's Jim Rayner? You guys are slowing down content to rework stuff. How's yeah. Jim Rayner coming along? I'm just curious. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, yeah. like, like first of all, I think they already, uh, you know, they uh, basically said they would do rework at some point. Uh, and I think also another indicator of, you know, there being a rework coming someday is that, technically speaking, they could make Rainer viable right now. Like, they could just tweak his numbers, and I think he yeah. would be a fine hero. Like, his kit isn't actually that bad. It's boring as hell mind you, yeah. but uh, it's not that bad. It's not like you can't make this here viable. So the fact that they're not tweaking him, I think strongly indicates that in a few months, maybe from now, we're going to see a brand new Rainer. A few months, he says. Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think I, I, like, this is the thing. I would like to see more little little tweaks, which I started mm -hmm. doing more recently. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, okay, sure, like you're going to rework Rainer. That's fine. But there's no harm in giving the Rainer that we have now a few little like tweaks True. or buffs True. or quality of life things agree. while we're waiting for the rework, you know? Absolutely. I think that'd be nice. Did you know Jim Rainer's trait no kicks used to be uh, time reduction whenever something died? Oh, that's one of his yeah. talents now. Yeah, that's one of his talents now. They used to be so dope. You could almost have two Hyperions <laughs> out sometimes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Do you remember yeah, the days where Hyperion was bugged? Yes, that, oh, was, that was horrendous. It's still... <laughs> 
It's scaled with. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think it's scaled marksman with season marksman, damage? and it applied yep. both giant killer and uh, the executioner on the attack. So. Yeah. If there I was a target that was slow, yeah. you would get bonus damage, and Giant Killer would apply to everybody. It was just nuts. Yeah, I think it worked with focus attacks as well. It would I give think it, so, like, yeah. cool damage reduction. <laughs> so, like, every attack he did was a focus attack. Yeah, it was pretty insane. That was also when they, like, reworked Thrall a bit. Mm -hmm. So it was the Hyperion Earthquake meta. It was terrifying. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Bloodlust. That was a thing as and well. Apocalypse. I remember going into one of the games, yeah. and it was just Earthquake, Hyperion bloodless and everyone yeah. just evaporated. I was just sitting there going, what the hell just happened? It was the start of one of the seasons. It was the purely. Exodia meta where everybody was literally saying, <laughs> oh shoot, they got yeah. two part, two pieces of the Exodia. They <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was, it was a magical time. It's great, it's great. But Jimmy's gonna get there at some point. He's got a lot of fans out there and we feel with you guys. Mm. Um, it's gonna be glorious, yeah. just need to see it. All right, so Urel, I think we all came to a very quite nice uh, analysis. She's needing, she needs a little bit mm -hmm. of love, but I'm pretty sure, or we're pretty sure she's going to get it. So we're moving did from... I mention, go, go did ahead. I mention I'm at 100% win rate? Because I don't uh, know if I brought it up. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100 zero, zero, small zero, line, small zero, 100%. Whoa, dude, you've won every game? Damn, bro. That's yeah, awesome. I don't know if I brought that up. <laughs> yeah, it's almost okay. as good just, just as the clear. legendary <laughs> Inside Karazim by Pally Time. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that at Gamescom, dude. You remember the game with 2-8 and, and uh, oh, myself? Oh, absolutely. I talk about that all the time. I've never <laughs> had a better game in my life than when I was playing Karazim versus you guys with zero latency. It was amazing. So for those of you who have no idea what we're talking about, so uh, we're, we're at Gamescom 2017, and Chu and I were streaming on the booth. And we're just in the same team, you know, playing against the viewers. And all of a sudden, we faced an enemy Karazim. And we were like, dude, that Karazim is legit. He refuses to die. He keeps everybody alive, landing palm after palm after palm. And then at some point, we just, uh, we're just like hearing those screams from behind. And Pally <laughs> was actually playing with some of the viewers behind us. And he was just making our lives a living hell. It was glorious. It was dancing. <laughs> I remember I ran up behind you and I was like, so what you think of that Karazim? Like yeah. I ran up full speed. I was so excited. That game was so fun. It was amazing. You know what else is amazing? Hero Chop Shop. I want to get into it. It's, 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 <laughs> I just can't hold back any longer. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, right. we're going to lift the curtain for the hero that we thought of. And maybe we're going to see her. Maybe. Oh, no, I basically spoiled this. She. All right. Although 2018, oh. we don't have gender, but. That's it. Don't want to presume. Yeah. All right. It's but, boom. There we go. It's Illyria Windrunner. That's the hero we thought of. And I think a few days ago, weeks ago, there was a new comic in World of Warcraft, like a new WoW comic. Did you guys read it? I did not. No. I actually forgot to get around to reading it. Yeah. Damn. Well, I don't want to spoil or anything, but it's about the Windrunner it's sisters. Good. Oh, yeah, I yeah. legitimately oh, cool. even know they were making WoW comics leading up to yes, this. Yes, Pally. It's hmm. the third one. It's basically they're setting up the story for BFA, for Battle for Azeroth. Yeah. Azeroth. First one was about Jaina. Second one was about Magni. Uh, and the third hmm. one is now about the Windrunners. Ah. And you cool. get to see a different side of Sylvanas, man. If you're a Horde fan and a Horde follower, you better think twice if you wanted to serve that war chief. I'm just saying that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying that. Wait, what do you mean a different saying? side? She's obviously evil. I've never seen her that evil. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Me. Whoa. <laughs> never That's seen the her the that weird evil. Part. That's the weird part of picking your faction, right? Because mm -hmm. at the beginning yeah. of the game... Uh, yeah. it's usually just, oh, hey, I like, uh, for, for, I wouldn't say everyone, but for most people, oh, hey, I like that orc, let's play that, or I like this <laughs> thing, let's play that. Like, it's it's a cosmetic choice. Mm. And especially on the Horde side, the leader changes, like, every expansion. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Like, yep. it, it, so, like, it does, yeah. <laughs> finding, finding the voice of your faction can be very mm. difficult, I think, yeah. in, in WoW right now. You should yeah. definitely check it out if you haven't done so. Check out the Windrunner comic. It should still be in the launcher if you open the Blizzard Battle.net launcher and on oh, the, yeah. the WoW tab. It should cool. be there somewhere. But uh, hmm. let's get to Hilaria Windrunner. So I did the hero this time. Last uh, episode, we saw Nupcakes doing Malganus. Uh, this time, I basically did the Hilaria Windrunner. And 
the cool thing for those of you who don't know what Illyria does and who she is, she's the sister of uh, Sylvanas Runerunner, obviously, and she plays a really important mm -hmm. role in Legion, right? That's where she pops up in Torellion, and she uh, are having like a pretty pretty cool battle. Um, and she is dedicated to mastering the Void. The Void is like this, you know, this black dark realm that even the legion fears like even the legion doesn't go into the void because it's so hard to uh, survive there and the the magic there is so hard to master but Elaria does mm -hmm. and she basically uses it every now and then that's also where the void elves come from right the void elves yeah. they uh, also learn how to use the void in their in their advantage so the trade i was thinking of is called into the void and i just wanted to have this corrupted evil side about Elaria's kit right so uh, mm -hmm. When she's using basic abilities and she hits enemy heroes and deals damage to them, she builds up void energy. That's like her secondary uh, resource. And every 10 stacks up to a maximum of 30, she gets a little bit of basic damage increase. So she gets stronger the more void she channels and stores up. And then you can activate it. Uh, and when you activate it, she becomes consumed by the void, like partially, right? And you see different visuals. She has like black arms or whatever, just wings whatever you want to use to demonstrate it. And all of her basic abilities, not the heroics, but the basic abilities are enhanced for a short time. Like, it's basically like a counter, right? The more uh, void energy you have, the longer you stay in that state, and then it drains until it reaches zero. And upon death, of course, you lose a couple of those stacks. So that's like the trade that I wanted to go for. By the way, for you guys, if you have any questions, if you want to add anything, just interrupt me. Just boom. Don't, Kendrick, be quiet. 100% cool. <laughs> win rate. On your route. <laughs> <laughs> Can I write that in here oh somewhere? My God. <laughs> yeah, right, I'm, I'm going to write it right here. All right, now fun. everybody knows it. There we go. <laughs> Let's, we want to see this in the game as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. So that's pretty straightforward. So you basically you damage yeah. enemy heroes, you mm -hmm. build up a little bit of void energy, yeah. you can activate it, and then your basic abilities become stronger for a short period of time. Here we go. Yeah. Boom. So cool. I like it. Talk about it's a good like foundation. Q. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So I thought, you know, Illyria, she's like a ranger, she's like a hunter. She's I think in Hearthstone, she's also like one of the alternate hunter portraits, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So instead of Rexo, you can go for her. So I thought, you know, let's just use a couple of hunter abilities uh to make her a little less dark, so she's not only the Void. She's definitely more than that. So multi-shot is her Q, and the way I imagine it is like you uh, you aim, so Lyria stands still for a few uh, moments, like not really long, it's just a short channel, and then she stores three arrows, and you can manually decide when to, to shoot them, but you have a five-second window, or a six-second window, I think I added, so you're going to have to use those shots eventually. You just can't store them forever, but you can manually just boom, 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 and shoot up to three shots in different directions, right? And okay, uh, yeah. those arrows, they will uh, deal a little bit of, just a tiny little bit of splash damage when they uh, impact something. And mm -hmm. yeah, so if you don't okay. use any arrows, after six seconds, the ability goes on cooldown. So you have a little bit of time to think where you want to use them, that, but not an endless time. Gotcha. So okay. it's, like, it's like a short little cast time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once you do the cast, you have three charges that you can spend. Yeah. You can walk around normally, you can just do whatever, okay. but you can always press Q, Q, Q. Gotcha. Cool. All right. And uh, the void effect is, of course, remember, when you uh, have enough void energy, you can use it. And when the void is active, then the arrows will actually pierce. So they won't, you know, get intercepted by the first enemy hero she hits. And there were also slow targets in the explosion area. So she has a little bit more, just a little tiny CC, and the arrows will pierce. Mm hmm Okay. That's I think I think if you I, I'm gonna save any like kind of comments on the whole thing until you go through the whole kit, because there's some pretty big synergies, like because the trait does different stuff with each Absolutely. one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold back until you get through everything here as much as I can. <laughs> Before we continue, though, what are your thoughts on Illyria? Like, do you like her as a character, or mm. do you think she's, you know, she's not that cool? She's not <laughs> as cool as Sylvanas, for example. What are your thoughts, Pally? Yeah. Um, from what I've seen of her, she just seems like a like a ranger to me. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm just getting through the Legion story right now, and like uncovering her, I was like, oh hey, that's all right. That's her over there. <laughs> all right. So, like, I feel like I'm gaining more insight just from seeing your theory crafting on her right. than I already know. 
<laughs> what were you enough cakes? Are you like uh, um, which Windrunner uh, are you a mm. fan of? Uh, I think Sylvanas is definitely the most interesting one. Mm-hmm. Um, no doubt, like she's got the most story, the most. I've had the most interactions with Sylvanas over the course sure. of Warcraft stuff. I mean, that, that was one of the, re- the things that really interested me when, because you told me which hero you're going to cover. Uh, and then like, uh, a couple of days later, I saw what you designed, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but while I was waiting in that period, I was like, what sort of Illyria are we going to get? And it's also a relevant question for any hero that comes into Heroes yeah. of the Storm is which version of that hero are we getting? <laughs> are we going to get the Illyria from Warcraft 2? Um, Damn, sort of I don't even area. remember her in Warcraft 2. Well, I never played it. I looked it up and <laughs> she was <in> Warcraft 2. <laughs> but like, there's all that Warcraft 2 stuff. I, I feel like that's always that's also something of a, a challenge mm-hmm. in terms of story that, you know, a lot of us won't have played Warcraft 2. Um, like I, like I'm, I think I'm, I'm trying to remember what age I am. I'm 27, so like, <laughs> I played Warcraft 3, but Warcraft 2, I was too young at the time to play right. it, or at least I didn't get into it. I, I missed that. Um, so like I'm really familiar with Warcraft Three story and the WoW story, but I, I didn't really know anything about Illyria or Turalia and her husband right mm-hmm. before they showed up in Legion. I was just like, who are they? I've never heard of them. Um, I don't think she so, had yeah. much play time or much game time in Warcraft yeah. Three. Uh, in WoW, I don't not, know. not in Warcraft Three, but yeah. Warcraft Two. She, I, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure she was in it, or at least was in it as a a story character. Yeah. But it's like, what what version of the character do are you gonna like? Do we look at like, say, make a, a ranger, just mm-hmm. non void ranger, like Illyria from Warcraft Two, or do we build on the void stuff that we saw in Legion, and presumably will play a major role in the upcoming stuff? What's more iconic? Sure. I mean, like Illidan's an interesting one too, where if you're coming from like modern day WoW, you'd be like, Illidan, Hots, why does he look like that? He looks like a night elf. Why is he not a big <laughs> demon dude? Mm. Um, he only does that with his ultimate. But you could have, I mean, like Anduin is another character who's changed a lot. Like any of these characters that can change. Cool I mean, Kerrigan as well. As well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool Dan. Like there's different versions of some characters and especially characters that are like current right now, but are also going to be big characters in the future uh, of, of whichever franchise Blizzard is doing. Like which version of that character does Blizzard uh, put into Here's the Storm. I think that's a it's an interesting and a tricky question to dive into. So I thought it was cool that I, I was personally with Illyria, I was definitely leaning towards the Void stuff, probably yeah. myself, because I feel like a lot of players wouldn't have played Warcraft 2 and wouldn't know like just the, the plain plain Jane Ranger Illyria, but they'd be very familiar with mm-hmm. Illyria in WoW because, I mean, she has to be one of the big characters in the upcoming expansions. Like, not Balfour Azeroth, probably, but one or expansion or two down the line when it's like, okay, light versus void, let's do it. Illyria right. has to be one of the main ones. Also, you know, the void is not represented at all in Heroes right now, as far as I know. Yeah. True. Uh, it's not really, no. So, I mean, I mean it's, it's, we have a bunch of different druids. That wow. <laughs> That's true. We have a bunch <laughs> of different druids and trees and stuff. We have a bunch of people that shoot arrows. I think yeah. having the focus on the void would, would definitely make Yeah. Still waiting for that shape shifting druid though. Could be Diablo, could be well. Oh. You know? Oh true. yeah. Yep. Bear Brawl right. Mantle. So... What's he called? I probably got his name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Brawl Bear Mantle, maybe. <laughs> Let's continue with uh, her W. And it's another yeah. iconic hunter ability, right? Freezing trap. Uh yeah. you love it or hate it. In uh, in Hearthstone, it drives you nuts if you have an expensive minion and <laughs> you attack and bam, it goes back to your hand and costs more. Uh, in WoW, it's also very infuriating because you walk in it and you can't do anything and you want to just kill the hunter, but he's going to run away in that time. So after a short channel time, Alaria lays down a freezing trap, very similar to Chromie's uh, sand uh, time trap, right? Yeah. So you can only have mm-hmm. one of those active, though, just like uh, the original uh, time trap as well. And enemy heroes who walk in that in that trap, they're rooted, and then after the root is over, they have... A massive flow, that decays, though. So it's not like you're going to be slowed by, let's say, 90% for five seconds, but you have like an 80% slow, and then it decays very quickly to normal movement speed. And the slow decays over a short period of time. And here comes the trick. When you are empowered by the void, uh, instead of having a freezing trap, the trap actually becomes like a, like a void trap. So you could, in theory, activate your trade shortly before you see an enemy hero walking in that, and then it has like a damaging effect the Void Trap, and instead of rooted, the enemy hero becomes silenced and then uh, slowed. So the slow remains. Instead of rooted, though, he becomes silenced, or she becomes silenced and takes a little bit of damage as well, which the normal Freezing Trap doesn't deal. Sounds cool. 
So yeah, I just really wanted to add this like uh, skill component, right? Where you just activate your trait at the right time to get maximum value from it. Hmm. Yeah, that's really so interesting. Do you think, um, does the trait have to be at maximum stacks in order to be used? Or I if you need that silence right away? Uh, no, I think the, the only difference is like if you activate the trait, it's let's say 10 stacks rather than 30, mm -hmm. is that it's gonna, uh, you know, it's gonna go down much quicker. It's gonna drain right. much faster. So if you have like 30 stacks, you're gonna spend much more time in the void form rather than in 10 stacks. Gotcha. So you could basically activate it whenever. But you need to be careful because time is of the essence on how long you can stay in that void form. And since she is a ranged assassin, gentlemen, what does every ranged assassin need? What is that that Jimmy doesn't have? A movement skill. <laughs> a trace. <Yes. laughs> Nailed oh. it. There we go. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> some sort of escape mechanism, some sort of saving grace, right? Vala has it. Uh, who else has it? Uh, Phoenix. I think with the exception Phoenix. of maybe Zuljin and Jimmy, everybody has it. Every ranged auto attacker, that is. The mages don't. Yeah, mages. Yeah. And mm. the ability that I gave her was Void Rift. So mm -hmm. it's like a, it's got a passive effect. So it restores 10 stacks of void energy if you use it. So basically, you activate the ability and boom, you get 10 stacks. And uh, it has a fairly long cooldown because it's, it, it is mobility, ability, right? So it's like mobility, it's like an escape tool. And what it does is Valera creates a void rift near her. So you have like a little flame or you have a little uh, rift, you know, in the ground. And over the next five seconds, you can reactivate that ability to instantly teleport to the Void Rift's location. So it's like a mini circle that Gul'dan has, right? The circle of protection or whatever it's called. I forget what uh, it's called, actually. <laughs> portal? Something like yeah. that? Oh, circle, <laughs> demonic circle, I think it's called, but I'm not sure. Oh, that, that's it. Yeah, 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 that's it. So it's like a mini version of that. Obviously, mm. you have a five second time window, so it doesn't stay there forever, which for Gul'dan mm -hmm. is the case, right? So you need to be very careful when to use it, and then you also need to be on time or in uh, in time to use it because if you don't use it within the next five seconds, it's gone, and you have no more escape tool. Yeah. Mm. So kind of similar to um, Symmetra in Overwatch, where you throw yes. this thing out, it's there, you go back to it, but only if you react to it fast. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And uh, I thought it was pretty nice. You know, it's like, uh, I don't know, it, it exists in WoW, I think. I should know because I'm currently leveling a Void Elf, but I think the Void Elf racial yeah. ability is exactly yeah, like that's that. that's it. Yeah, it, might, it is. Yeah, it yeah. might have yeah. different numbers, but I think it works exactly the way it does here. Yep, Do they that, throw something forward and teleport it, or is it a thing they drop on the ground? and then uh, they, they throw it forwards, and it travels yeah. forwards, and then you reactivate to okay. teleport to wherever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like slightly faster than running speed, but not that much. It's more about strategic use of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. It's kind of like Sylvanas Haunting Wave in Hearts, yeah. basically, except slower. Yeah. 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 And then if you use the Void effect, right, if you're in Void form, uh, first of all, you have cooldown reduction on this ability, so you might be able to maybe use it twice in short succession. Uh, and after Valeria used the teleport to that Void Rift, she's also going to get increased movement speed for a short period of time. So it's like a really nice escape. So you're not going to have crazy movement, right? It's not like Divine Seed or anything, but... Just late, let's say 10%, 20%, something along those lines. Kendrick, I love, I love, can I just say in the void effect bit, you've, instead of calling her Aliria, she's now Valeria. <laughs> she's transforming into Valera, your favorite Damn. hero. <laughs> uh, I noticed that too. I Damn. actually scrolled up to make sure. That so when, when you empower it with void form, it silences for two and a half seconds. <laughs> God damn it, Kendrick. Why? <laughs> hey, Nupkicks, did you see the new Valera skin that we're going to get next week? No. Uh, no. Wait, what? what I don't it? think so. You, you heard about the lions and horse skins, right? Yeah, yes. I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, going to get like. one too. I know she's not part of either faction, but she gets a really sweet skin as well. I think you can see it in the trailer. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Echoes of Alterac skins. It's really nice. Yeah, man, I don't recognize that. I, I don't know I the skins. It's not, I don't guys. cover this game for a living. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, it's, oh, that's super cool. It's a Night Slayer rogue set from WoW. That looks great. Looks really good. She already has Bloodfang, so that's cool to see her with this one as well. Yeah, let's see. 
Was it the first thing that showed up uh, if you Googled it? Uh, it's like the third image on Echoes of Altrax skins for me. Okay, let's see if we can find it. The, the first image was actually Polytime has 100% win rate on a rail or something. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think I'm going to make a video we, we can show about my 100% win rate. <laughs> there we go. You should be able to see it right now. It's on the very right-hand side. You, uh, by the way, I, I mean, oh. I'm trying not to get overly exaggerated or excited, and I'm trying not to exaggerate, but that Raiden skin, though, oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. really good. That's the Ariel the skin. skin. The, the Spirit Ariel skin as well. I love yeah. it. Yeah, they're dope. Should we also the show Alliance the skins are way better than the Horde skins. Sorry, Horde players. <laughs> Should we also show the Horde guys? So what do you think? Yeah. Are you like, yeah. <laughs> the Horde skinners, no, they're not as good. Not, not, not even good. a little. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to show the Horde skins as well. We want to be equal mm -hmm. here. We don't want to show any yeah. bias. Why does it not show, though? There we go. So the and Horde the gets... Awesome. I haven't but... actually seen the Horde, uh, the Drakthar Rhaegar. I haven't seen that one in game. Oh, that's the best one for the Horde, for sure. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think it's interesting that they turned Johanna into an orc. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. interesting. Junker was kind of uh, making a lot of sense, right? Because he's he's pretty he's pretty like like a maniac. He fits in there. Yeah, he's, he might yeah. as well be a guy. Yeah, guy. he fits. Garrosh, of course, rocking that uh, <laughs> vanilla PvP armor, looking so good. That does look good. <laughs> I don't say this very often, but Garrosh here looks good. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, cool. So I think it's time to get back to Valera. Uh, I already, I'm already calling her Valera now. Uh, uh oh. Uh oh. And uh -oh. It's getting worse. <laughs> with the heroic abilities, I wanted to be a little crazy. Like I, I wanted to be a little crazy. So Toxic Arrow is her mm -hmm. first one, which is more like catering towards the hunter ranger play style and that one i wanted to be really sneaky because i think that's also what hunters in hearthstone are, are known for right to be super sneaky and annoying to play against so it can only be used as a part of multi-shot so you can only use it if your multi-shot is currently stored right so you have that mm. six uh second time window and you can only use it in there and then instead of using q or pressing q you have one charge of toxic arrow so you can just press r so you can hide it. You could just shoot two normal multi-shot arrows, and then the third one, final one, is going to be the toxic arrow. Or you can press it first or in the middle to make it highly unpredictable for the enemy when you're going to use the toxic arrow and when you're going to use normal ones, right? And okay. upon activation, Alaria's next arrow becomes toxic arrow. And uh, the first hero hit by the toxic arrow becomes intoxicated. So that would be kind of like a new CC effect, like a new debuff. Lowering armor by 10. So you have lowered armor. Take a little bit of extra damage, and you also take permanent poison damage until a maximum of 75% uh, of your max HP. So you're going to have this ticking debuff. It's going to go on, it's going to go on, it's going to go on until you lost at max 75% of your max HP. So it's not going to kill you, but it's going to deal a lot of damage. But it can be cured if you're getting a heal, any heal whatsoever. So your support is just going to have to heal you. Uh, you pick up a region globe, you use the healing fountain, or you teleport back to base. So maybe we can just tweak these things. Like if that turns out to be uh, too strong as a counter, so maybe you just remove the teleporting aspect or you remove the globes, whatever. But basically mm. you're forcing out a heal by your support. Otherwise you're going to have that permanent debuff, just making you squish here and just putting up the poison damage on you. Do you think, yeah, like do you that think that's too strong or do you think it's too weak? <clears throat> I'm really curious um, to hear your opinion on it. Yeah, I mean, I... I, I don't personally like it. I don't like the bit with, you know, the heal cures it. I think that really skews some of the healers. I mean, it's just so easy if your team has a healer mm -hmm. for, with most but healers gonna have to, to use cure a cooldown. It. Yeah, but I mean, then, like, a lot of them have very short cooldown heals. Right. Like, Morales right. will always have a heal, you know? So, like, it could... Whereas, like, Uther has much fewer heals. Mm -hmm. um, so, I feel like it would be, you know, it's just... Uh, it would instantly be healed away uh, with think the next about, heal. Uh, think so, about Green Man from Karazim. Just constantly ticking heals. Right? Yeah. Just it, immediately goes down, but, buff immediately removed. Yeah, or Lucio or Brightwing. Yeah, Chatter yeah. saying those too. But what I think is really interesting, like the idea of putting this absolutely massive poison dot on a hero. Yeah. I, I kind of actually like that. You and the know? thing is, That's like, kind of funny, something we should yeah? probably mention as well is it's a medium <laughs> cooldown. So it's not going to have like a 100 yeah. second cooldown, right? It's going to be like yeah. 30 seconds maybe. So yeah. uh, you can't really waste it. And also, I think it's. 
in a team fight, obviously, when the enemy team support uh, is nearby, it's not going to be that strong, right? But imagine you face it, you face yeah. someone one on one, or you find someone in a hidden alley, and you're just going to yeah, sh shoot sure. that thing at him, and you're going to beat that sucker. Like rotating on uh, Chris and Hollow, yeah. Catch, mm. catch someone in the jungle. How long are you thinking that uh, the poison takes to get them down? Uh, like, how long does it take to remove all yeah. that health? That, that, that's yeah. the thing, right? How strong do you want to make that poison? That's something we could always tweak, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if you put, like, I mean, considering Pyroblast, right, there's a big chunk of someone's, like, mm. health. Um, and, like, they can't, they can't really do much about it. There, there's a couple of counters, but not all that much for most heroes when it's flying towards you. You know, you do have stuff kind of like that in the game. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be kind. I don't know, like if what would happen if you gave a hero like a you put a fifty percent of their max HP dot, and it yeah. takes like I say twelve seconds to tick over. You know, like they have some time. Healers have time to prepare. Um, I mean, there's time to play around it. Um, and if you balance it into the actual damage output of her kit, like maybe it could work. I mean, it's it's definitely different, right? Yeah, in a pretty sure. interesting way. I don't know. I, I kind of think maybe you could make it. Maybe it could work. Um, it's it's quite unique, you know. And I, and I wanted <laughs> but to it's, add like all these all these counters because let's say if you play quick match and we remove the healing aspect, right? Um, how are you going to deal yeah. with that? Or let's say um, there's no healer in there. How are you going to cure that? So that's why I added like a region globe or yeah. a healing fountain, something that should be theoretically nearby and. Something that mm. you should be able to, uh, you know, yeah. get to. Maybe well, I mean, the... it's, it's like if you look at like purification salvo with Phoenix mm -hmm. or like pyroblast is a great example. Like, or there's so many ultimates that do hit you like really hard and fast. Um, it's the same with any of them. It's like I just took a big chunk of damage. How do I deal with it? Well, it's just the way the game is balanced yeah. that these assassins can do big chunks of damage. So whether it happens in just a single ability or it happens as a a poison that happens over time, I don't see there being a massive issue between those two. So what were you going to say, Pally? Maybe the, the region globe, for instance, doesn't uh, remove all of the poison, but you get an increased heal from the region globe, like more so than you would normally. Yeah, so it kind maybe. of counteracts the oh, damage or yeah. something like that. That is an interesting idea. Yeah. You give someone, it's like, oh, you've got a 100% of your HP as a dot, but you, t you get like double healing until the dot is healed off maybe. or something. Yeah. Something weird like that. Huh. All right, and so that that was our first one. Like it was a little bit gimmicky, you know, low cooldown. It's just, you know, a little new mechanic there as well. But the second one, I wanted yeah. to be completely different, right? Just like Elyria's personality is kind of torn apart, right? You, she has her normal Elven mm -hmm. personality, and then she's got the Void uh, personality, which is like yeah. a lot darker <laughs> and more wicked. So the R two is give in to the Void, and basically Elyria becomes fully consumed by the void for a short period of time so her visual kit also changes like she's no longer the high elf that uh we all know her to be like she's fully dark she's fully purple black uh looks really vicious and then <laughs> during that time she can't use multi-shot and freezing trap because those are her hunter abilities right she can't use any of that she can mm -hmm. only use void drift to use the mobility and uh the ability that is given to the void so the new um ability that she gets Nearby enemy heroes become marked by the void. So you see markers over that those heroes, right? Only in her vicinity, though, not globally. So let's say, you know, in a pretty big radius around her. And for a short period of time, while this is active, Alaria can leap between marked heroes, inflicting damage every time she leaps. So she's like teleporting to those heroes, like Jun Jun Jun. Uh, you can always mm -hmm. you can only have three leaps at max, though. So it's not like you do it infinitely. So you can have like three stacks or three charges. Uh, or until the ability expires. So basically, she is jumping, teleporting from hero to hero, maximum three, uh, and damaging them. So it's like crazy mobility. You can jump from hero to hero. Uh, and also, that's the main synergy I wanted to build in there. If you activate your uh, rift, like your uh, little fissure, first, and then you jump to hero, to hero, to hero, and then you mm -hmm. activate your rift again, you're going to teleport back to your original position. Yeah, that's cool. That's the thing that <laughs> I wanted to do there. That's awesome. I ha I have one suggestion gotcha. and one question to go with this. The suggestion is very simple. Change the name from Give In to the Void to Surrender to Madness. Because that is like the classic priest void form thing. Oh, I agree. Uh, we're going to do that right now. So there we go. Like that is That just instantly fills the hype. <laughs> and then the question was, was this inspired a bit by... Uh, the Sylvanas Banshee moment in the Battle for Azeroth trailer, because that's what instantly came to my mind. 
when I was reading it, where Sylvanas goes banshee for him and yes. then like swoops between a few dudes. I, was like, I think that's really cool, yeah. especially because they're sisters. So like I had two that things in, in mind when I thought way. of this ability, and that's the one thing you hit the nail on the head. It was the Sylvanas just jumping from minion or soldier to soldier, right? Yeah. And the second thing was seven sided. That was so epic. <laughs> so the seven sided from ah. Tarzan. So it was also like he's hitting hero, 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 and then mm -hmm. looked really flashy. The only thing that I'm not sure is I think she should still be uh, able to take damage, but she shouldn't be targetable. So, for example, if she's jumping to mm -hmm. somebody and the flame strike is going up, she still takes the damage, but she can't be stunned where she can't be targeted by, let's say, a skill shot. Mm -hmm. Visually, I really like that idea. Uh, yeah. Especially if you're, if you just have your normal character model, and then suddenly it's transformed, and her movement completely changes. Yeah, it's and twisted, like said, purple, black, yeah, exactly. chaos. And especially if she goes back to her original location, and when she goes back, she's back in her normal mm -hmm. state. Like visually, I think that would be really impressive. Yeah. The thing is, like the the main difference as well, because I saw somebody in chat say the R one is useless now, which I kind of agree like uh, it, it looks really hard to justify the toxic era when you have this one right mm. uh, cooldown is the major difference right so surrender to madness would have like a hundred second cooldown maybe 90 seconds ish whereas the toxin era would be 20 30 seconds so you could have the other ability way more often more frequently compared to that one i think you could even add a small slow like a 10 15 percent slow on a toxic arrow true I and mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't spiral out of control or anything mm -hmm. Mm. Especially because they're poisoned, so they would have to be disorientated in some way, right? Yeah. Or maybe reduce their vision mm. for, like, by 10%, 20%. Oh, oh. that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, yeah. uh, like isolation, mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, now we're talking. Now we're making it <laughs> <our> better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I think there's no more, there's no, extra, no more extra gimmicks, right? Yeah, that was the last one. Uh, yeah. I just want you to know, I tried to edit in a V in front of all the Alliras, but I don't have permission to edit. <laughs> now you know why you don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> I, just I, just, you know, I just wanted to be honest with you, man to man. <laughs> I was going to just uh, add a bunch of Vs in all over the place. Uh, all right. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that sounds cool. I, I yeah. like the idea. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck on what the visual would look like. Yeah. With the with the surrender to madness, I think that'd be really cool. And maybe the moment you uh, the moment you press the mm -hmm. button, she's gonna unleash like a scream, like a chaotic scream. And yeah, boom, exactly. She enters void mm. form. That would be pretty pretty cool. That'd and, be really uh, cool. Wow, can you believe it, guys? We've already been live for two hours. I can't believe. Time flies when you're talking to beautiful people. When you're talking to people with a hundred percent URL win rate. A hundred percent. Did you? Did I say what? that already? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, oh, you should have told me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think we've uh, we've come to to the end of the show. As uh, you know, as sad of a moment uh, as that is, but I think it's time to maybe get those shadows in there. I'm gonna start with you, Nutcakes. Oh boy, all oh, the pressure. I, I, we did this last week. I had nothing prepared, but I forgot this week again. <laughs> uh, such a disaster. Oh my God. I'll just say, like, uh, uh, you know what, Polly? I'm going to give you a bit of a shout out for popping in at some of my streams. I've been streaming Dark Souls the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. having a bit of fun. Polly popped in, gave a bit of a cheer, a bit of a raid one of the days. That was awesome. So thank you. And thank you to uh, people that have been tuning into that as well and giving me tips, helping me not lose my mind. I've been trying to pop in and, and give Kendrick a couple of helping hands as well because he's playing the game too. And, and, and it's a hard game. I it's a hard game. It is. Yeah. It is. So, yeah, nothing too exciting in shout outs this week, but just, yeah, thanks to those people giving me a hand with that. There yeah. I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to join you in that. Like, shout outs to Pally for showing up. Uh, big pleasure to have you in the show, man. And uh, thanks, Nupcakes, for always being there as well. Couldn't do it without you. Aww. And uh, thank, thank you. Shout out to all the viewers, of course, tuning in either live on Twitch mm. or uh, a little later on the Nupcakes VOD on YouTube. Uh, by the way, a lot of people yep. have been asking me about uh, uploading this onto iTunes, um, Spotify, and whatever else uh, you're using for uh, to listen to your podcasts. Uh, I'm definitely thinking about it. Uh, I've actually did a little bit of research uh, as to how to get your MP3s up there. It's actually not that hard. So. 
Maybe for the third, fourth, or fifth episode, we're going to be able to uh, provide you with that service. For now, though, it's just going to be, awesome. well, only going to be available on Nupkix's YouTube. <laughs> I just want to say that after reading your theory crafting for this character, I really do want to share my Death Week thing with you. Damn, you know I what? Nerd, I'm going to promise you this, out. Pally. Uh, since, <laughs> you know, Carbot didn't want to do it, he didn't respect you, he didn't appreciate you, we're going to invite you to the show once more. And then you, the the stage is going to be all yours for the Death Wing. <laughs> Promise, I'm right excited, there. I'm excited. I'm excited. And Pally, I think the last, uh, you know, the last segment belongs to you. The last words, the final words. Any shout outs? Anything you want to get rid of? Well, I didn't. I didn't come prepared for shout outs. What? But, but, um, thank you for having me. And play, I would recommend watching your guys' content way over mine. It's way better than mine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like I don't, I don't feel the need to self-promote that's all you guys you guys oh. are great i'm happy to be here i want to I mean, support i want to support you guys on twitch and on youtube as much as i can so thank you well, again thank you for having me it's been fun thanks man thanks for being here dude yeah absolutely amazing and if you guys out there want to get in touch with either pally nupcakes or myself you know where to do uh you know what to do you know where to go uh, the Twitters you can see right mm -hmm. there on your monitors right now. Uh, and I think on, on our Twitter profiles, you can probably get out to our Twitch channels and YouTube channels as well. Eventually, uh, if anything fails or if everything fails, you can always Google our names and you <laughs> should get to the right uh -huh. addresses. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much for watching and spread the word. Tell your friends about Calm Before the Storm every 14 days on a biweekly basis. We're going to uh, talk to some of the... Heroes of the Storm community members out there and uh, we're going to try to provide more entertaining topics and uh, things to talk about for you. So for now, see you in the Nexus. Take care and see you guys again in two weeks. Bye-bye. 100% win rate, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys.